Okay, we're live. <laughs> okay, I didn't expect that to come up uh, so quickly. I wanted to do an intro, but clearly that didn't work. So let's just wait for a few people to come on board. I know you folks thought I abandoned you today. Today was my regular uh, words, sorry, uh, spiritual insight show day, but uh, I had to cancel that. I was really tired, but we'll discuss that later. So let's wait for some folks to come on in. Let me make sure I'm here on Facebook and all of my other social media sites. And then once we're on board, we're gonna take this baby to the next level. All right, why isn't this working? There you go. All right, so we're just gonna wait for a few folks to come in. All right, and while you guys are coming in, probably can share it with someone. And uh, we will address this. Go to slide, viewers comments. Okay, let me see something here. Hey, Minister Kevin, okay, I see you. <laughs> All right. So uh, I haven't been with you guys in the past two weeks, as you would have known, some of you. I was over there in uh, Texas to do the conference with Dr. Alexis. Uh, after I would have left uh, Texas, my wife and I did some R&R &R in Florida for about a week. And then we came back home. And that's why you didn't see me or hear from me. But what I did do is posted some former videos. Okay, what's happening here now? What's happening here? What is happening here? Okay, let's see what the problem is here. Just give me one second, something going completely crazy. There we go. I don't know why my camera went out, but I'm trying to bring it back in. Okay, the devil is a liar. <laughs> okay, so folks, just give me a second. I don't know why this camera went out. What's, what's going on here? Let me see something that maybe my, hello. Let's see. This is totally nuts. Okay. What has happened? Okay, guys. I know you can hear me, so I'm, I'm just lost as to why I didn't my camera go. Okay, here we go. The devil is a liar. Get out of here, devil. <laughs> Should we try that? No way. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let's get back in here. This dude have a serious problem, man. Right? <laughs> so, so like I was saying, man, it is good to be back home. Listen, I don't care where I go in this world. I love the Bahamas. You understand? I could be away for a while. Now, after a while, I become homesick because I can't wait to come back here to these sunny shores, beautiful turquoise water. I, I love it. I love the Bahamas. So we are 339. We're going to wait till we get to 500, and then we're going to get started with this awesome teaching. I want to thank everybody that made it to Texas. Boy, Texas was awesome. Texas was awesome, 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 awesome. And for those of you who we would have done the photos with, please, can you email me those photos? I want to post them, uh, post those photos on my various social media pages. So if you are listening to me, could you please send me a copy of the photos? Because I, I don't have all of them. So, and I am going to post them on my uh, social media sites, particularly Facebook. So that they could, so the rest of them could be jealous. <laughs> they should have come. <laughs> but we had an awesome, awesome time. I want to thank Dr. Alexis. Man, listen, you guys, please support this lady and what she's doing. Dr. Alexis, her awesome husband, uh, James, a dynamic duo, as well as the K Nation group. These guys got it together. And I encourage you to support their ministry. We do because they're doing an excellent work in terms of getting the gospel out there and they're doing their part in, in the vineyard. So I'm, I'm very thankful for Dr. Lexus and her K Nation group and what they're doing. And I'm, I'm asking you guys to please support them however you can, because again, what they're doing is phenomenal. It was a very, 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 very successful uh, conference, very enlightening. And I was uh, taken aback by the many uh, comments 
uh, the few people that I'd have an opportunity to speak with, and I was just overwhelmed by their stories. And you know, sometimes until you get to these conferences, you really begin to see the impact that you have on people's lives with the Word of God. And one of the things that was reiterated into my hearing and hearing each person's uh, how they got connected to my teachings and so on, and when they did, I'm constantly hearing, I love the way how you stick to scripture. I love the way that you back everything that you say with scripture. I love listening to that because it's an, it, is, it encourages them to, to read their Bible more. I found a few ladies and gentlemen. This this was a boy. This was there was a gentleman that I met. I, I I am so sorry I didn't get this young man's name, but he didn't know of any conference. But a friend of his called him, who who knew that he lived in Texas, and told this guy to please, please go and visit this particular conference. Listen to this particular guy. Blah blah blah. But anyway, when we walked in there, for you taking photos after the after the, the teaching I did. He came, he introduced himself, and he explained the story to me, and I was just so taken aback. I was so taken aback and to hear the joy that he expressed, and, and he was so happy that he came because he didn't go into detail, but I don't think he was at a good place in his life at that time. So for me, man, listen, you could never, never, ever begin to imagine how grateful I am to God that not only has he given me a gift to teach other people, but to put myself aside and really push his word and get people directed to his word. And that's why it's a big issue for me. And a lot of you know, I get down very hard on the the seed sowing and the covering foolishness garbage because you're, you're, you're taking from people their liberty in Christ. And that is something I vow never to do. That's your freedom. All I could do is teach you the word of God. You could either take it or reject it. But at the end of the day, I would have done my part with no bullying from my end. I, I read the exact scriptures to you. I told you what the word of God says. So it is totally up to you now to, to do the will of God, to follow the laws of God. That's, that's totally on you now. I'm not here to, to, to threaten you, to curse you. And I cannot do those things because I pattern my life after Jesus' teaching and there's nowhere in the scriptures where Jesus did it. So I don't have the right to curse the body of Christ or any member of the body of Christ. If you choose not to follow the laws of Christ, then I cannot force you to do it. All I could do is, is teach it to you and with the hope, okay, that you would grab a hold of it and run with the word of God uh, like I did. Okay, we had 490. I have another issue here, so let me just pull this up. Because the devil is a liar, right? <laughs> okay, so let me just pull up. Here we go. I'm an issue with this right there. That's what I want to do. So I'm just pulling up my iPad here to make sure I have all of my right scriptures and stuff ready for. There we go. It's waiting on that right there. Okay, let me pull that back there. So for all of you, like I said, that have attended attended the conference, I am I am happy that you came. Again, I was in. I was totally taken aback by uh, the amount of people that flew into America. I didn't even notice for the conference. Uh, we had folks as far as uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands. I think we had some from Trinidad, uh, a lot from out of state within the continental United States. So, you know, I haven't done a conference since uh, October of 2019. So when I saw the amount of folks that were in there, man, I was just uh, shocked. <laughs> you know, I said, here you come to see this, this black fellow from the Bahamas. <laughs> so, but we had, a, we had a fun time. And as you know, as usual, my presentation, I can be very comical, very, very uh, uh, funny, but at the same time, you know, really drive the point home. And that's the way that I present, uh, the way that I do it. Some people don't like it. Uh, I hope they would get saved. I don't know why this thing is cutting out. Why is this cutting out? Somebody needs to be praying. Somebody needs to be praying. We got some uh, anti-God folks coming against the word of God. I don't know why do they don't accept Jesus Christ and stop joking. <laughs> so let's see what's happening here again. I don't know why this is doing this. So let's restart this again because I do not want to be interrupted once I get started. 
So let me just restart my camera. And I don't know why this is doing this. This is a brand new camera I just got. The, Zon the Sony, I think ZV E10 or something like that. And uh, it's doing everything except, okay, let me just turn this off here. And then turn it back on. I think I know the problem, so let me just try this right here. Okay, let's see what happens now. All right, let's see what happens here. Okay, I don't know why it's doing this, but the devil is a liar. You guys need to be praying, man, because let me tell you some of these witches and warlocks and wizards, they, they trust me, they calling on, on their gods. So we need to show them what time it is. All right? Okay, so as you would see, our topic today, and again, before I get started, for those of you that about the, the Dallas uh, conference, if we did photos together, please, if you could send me, email me a copy of those photos, I would be more than happy. I want to do a collage, uh, posting them on my website, so we can make the rest of them jealous. Who, who should have come? <laughs> okay? <laughs> so if you could do that for me, I'd really, really appreciate that. So the laws that dictate success and prosperity. This is going to be awesome. This is going to be very, 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 very awesome. All right. Now, I know many of you, let me just put that over there. Many of you for years, I was one of them who I bought a lot of books uh, that talk about the keys to success, the three point plan to success, the seven, whatever, ever. Uh, which you call it to success. And a lot of those books, while they're very informative uh, based on my study of scripture, it is not giving me the true, true, uh, the true path to success, so to speak. All right. Uh, I'm going to make some very heavy statements here. I'm not going to be challenged, but that will be on you as usual. I got the mic right now. <laughs> There are no keys to success. There's no seven, six, five, four, two, or one plan to success. It's, it's, it's not the case. In fact, success is achieved by the laws of success. Let's, let's be crystal clear there, all right? Success is achieved by the laws put in place by God Almighty, for us to achieve success. So if we are sowing seeds for success, if we are engaging in a ritual uh, for success, or whatever we're doing contrary to the scriptures, then I can assure you, you've taken an extended path to success. And what it will end up in is the one who has placed you on that path it is all designed to make them successful and not you. And you will always be a slave to trying to achieve success. So today I'm gonna to take my time and we're gonna go through scriptures as it relates to the laws, the rules and the principles that govern success and prosperity. So, Wherever you're being told where you have to uh, pay for success, this is anti-scriptural. If you have to sow for success, this is anti-scriptural. If you have to spin around or whatever you are being asked to do, and I'm gonna show it to you in the scriptures, outside of these laws that I did not write, that I'm gonna show you what the scripture has dictated to us, the, the scriptures, and I love to put it this way, the scriptures are our manual, it's our policy for life. It is how we ought to live life to achieve the success the creator has designed for us. Him being the manufacturer, <coughs> excuse me, of the earth and us, who would know best in terms of giving us the right uh, rules to follow to achieve the success, genuine one, that he has designed. There are no shortcuts to success if it's outside of the laws of God. I just want to be clear there. 
And whomever's telling you otherwise is a charlatan, is a thief, is a liar. All right? And again, we're going to prove this uh, through scripture. All right? So success, let me be clear again, there are no keys. There is no key, one key, or keys, plural, to open a door to walk into the room of success. There are protocols governed by laws for success. And the reason why I'm putting it this way is because if I were to give you a key right now and say to you, go open that door right over there and you will be successful, that may be true. You may become successful. However, because you didn't follow the laws and the rules that would have caused you to attain success, then there's a big gap of understanding, revelation, and how to articulate and to manage the success that you've now encountered. And this is why you see people who would have won the lottery after a year or two, they're back to the position they were again because someone gave them a key to success and not the laws to success. Because what the laws are doing for you and to you while you're on the path to success is it is conditioning you, I love this, for success. I love this, man. I love I love the word God. Yeah, I don't know about you. I love it. I love the word. <laughs> I love it. So I don't want no shortcuts. Let me take the licks that are necessary in grooming me for the success and the prosperity that I desire to achieve. I know of many people, many people who, who we would have assisted, whom we would have guided in a particular path to achieve the success based on the scriptures. I would know of many people who we sat with, who I sat with personally, and they said to me, uh, well, actually, I would throw out this question to them. And most of them who are dealing with the uh, financial challenges, I'd say, tell me something right now. If the Lord were to bless you right now with, with a million dollars right now, I mean, just bless you, what would you do with it? If the Lord gave you the home that you wanted, what would you do to it? Do with it, sorry. And for the most part, they would say to me, "Boy, Kevin, if the Lord bless me, I could almost dictate what they're going to say. I'll, I'll, I'll you know, get a, 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 a set up a, a pantry and to feed the hungry and do like a soup kitchen. Where have I heard this before? <laughs> so you hear all of this, what they would do, right? However, because they never went through the protocol of success, because they never went through the protocol of success, then the inevitable always takes place. And the inevitable is that they again find themselves in the same position that they despised. Why? Because the laws of success, like I would have mentioned earlier, the whole idea of it is to condition. Now, I don't know. Can you guys see me? Because for some reason, I think. Okay, you're saying you're not seeing me. I don't know why this is doing this. This is so crazy. Okay. Okay, so let me let me just put a pin in here. Let me just change this thing altogether. Give me one second. Let me just change this. This is absolutely crazy. Why is this? All right, so let me see if that makes a difference. It should. That should make a difference. Okay, so let's see here now. Okay, so I hope that would have fixed it. I don't know why 
hope you guys are praying because these these witches and warlocks would not give up so we don't give up all right so we're into them forget all of them <clears throat> so like i was saying all right so those who would have uh, taken the shortcut just pull this on the side here one second right there okay no no right here cam right right there right there <laughs> okay all right all right yeah well, listen liar his pants is on fire <laughs> right so those who never prepared for success and prosperity because that's what the laws of success does for a person it doesn't make you become instantly prosperous or instantly successful and a lot of you are following the laws right now right there there's so much opposition against you in fact you're losing more and in your mind based on the world's view you're probably doing something wrong no 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 you're doing everything right because you're being conditioned and the reason why it seems so difficult is because it's erasing a lot of things from you that you have concluded as the path to success so it's removing the laws of God that you're following is now moving away these pulling all of these things up from you and now adding things to you spiritually mentally wisdom wise so that now when the opportunities or when the success comes not only will you recognize it but you're totally equipped never to find yourself in your current position anymore I, i'm trying to help somebody today all right so the laws of success not two things it's doing to us it's, 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 it's taking us on our path to success, A. B, which is more important than anything else, it's conditioning us for the success that we inevitably, if we stay on this course, will achieve. And it would have prepared us so that when the success come, we know what to do. Let me give you an example of it, all right? Remember I said to you earlier, I said to some people, you know, the Lord was to bless you with a home, the Lord was to bless you uh, with a million dollars right now. What would you do? The million dollars. People always tell me, Kevin, I'll get a pantry. Kevin, I'll help the poor. Kevin, I'll buy mommy this. So I'm listening to all of this stuff, right? Because all I'm hearing here, a person who needs to engage in the laws to success and prosperity to condition them for the success that they ultimately want to achieve. So what's going to happen for those who, who took the shortcut, so to speak? Well, What's going to happen to them, they're going to do what they always did, but at a greater pace because they have the resources to do it with. And let me give you an example. If you are always a saver, someone who always put aside for later, then because you're getting more revenue or resources now, now you can do it at a greater pace because before, when you only was making $200, you could have take 20 or $30 from that and put it up. But now that you have lots more, thousands more, you could put up. So, will you, so what it does is that it, 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 it gives you or it causes you at a greater rate or pace to do what you always did before. So if you were a, a spender, a waster, any of that, all you have now are the resources to do it quicker now. So what is this telling us? This is saying to us, success, or sorry, wealth and riches and prosperity does not make us smarter. <laughs> no, you should have had that prior to coming in to the prosperity or the success. So this is why you find people who are educated, got good job positions and so on, right? But they were never conditioned for success. So what did they do? They think they're above other people. They talk down, condescending to others. They mistreat people. Why? Because rather than allowing the laws and the rules to groom them for success, what they did is they took what was done to them by their sub su superior supervisors and bosses, and now they become the very thing that they once despised. The bottom line is this. Whether you're aware of it or not, something or someone is conditioning you. As much as you dislike your father, as much as you dislike your mother, as much as you dislike your supervisor, your boss, 
If you are not going by the Bible, then unknown to you, you are becoming them. You're, you're, you're gleaning from them subconsciously. And the evidence of that is one day you're going to become a parent, a boss, a supervisor, and you're going to treat people the exact same way you were treated. Why? Because you never went to scripture or you were never taught scripture how to engage in the laws of success. So as a result of that, you were never groomed for prosperity. You were never groomed for success. So while you may become successful, you will not behave as one that has achieved godly success by treating others right. They're trying to help somebody. All right, so let's look at some laws right now. You all know where you go. All right, if you don't got the scripture, I don't hear nothing you're saying to me. I don't care how eloquent a speaker you are. If you don't have the scripture, you talk in Spanish, and I don't understand Spanish. No offense to my Spanish-speaking people, but I don't. Only thing I know in Spanish is como se llamo, and I think that means what is your name, all right? And my name is Kevino. <laughs> okay, that's as close as I get to Spanish right there. All right, so let's go. Let's go to Joshua chapter 1, and we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 8, all right? And we're going to take our time to read this, because while we would have read it on many occasions, we want some revelation now, okay? So at this point now, uh, Moses, the former leader of the children of Israel, is now deceased, and Joshua is now in his stead, or now has replaced them as the new leader for the Hebrew people or the children of Israel. So having such a, a big role to play as a leader, not only that, he's filling the shoes, excuse me, of a, a man who was renowned by the, the children of Israel. So clearly, whoever takes the place of Moses, that person by the children of Israel is going to be compared in everything that they do to Moses. So God is now coming early in the, in the picture here to reassure Joshua that Moses and his era is finished. You're the one to take on the baton now to lead my people. And God is reassuring him that I'm going to be with you like I was with Moses. And then God is going to give him some, some specific instructions for success. All right. Now, the truth was, he was being groomed for su success because, you know, he was the minister to Moses. He was being groomed for success. And when Moses was satisfied, Moses had introduced him. Moses had introduced him. I don't know why this is doing this. Moses had introduced him to the children of Israel of him uh, being the next leader. And folks, I don't know why this is doing this. This, this makes absolutely no sense. Mm. Be patient, Kevin. The devil is a liar. Okay, so let me try. Let me try this right here. This, this makes absolutely no sense. <clears throat> Joshua chapter 1. In the meantime, while I try to get this thing back up and running, you guys can uh, go to Joshua chapter 1, and we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 8. All right? Okay, people are saying we can hear you though. <laughs> okay, no, yeah, you saying that, but then there's some people say we need to see you though. <laughs> okay, so before that crew come on, let me just try this right here. Okay, this is this is work. Let's see something here. Mm. Now this here looks dark because this is my actual camera from the uh, this iMac computer. So. What I'm going to have to do is just go with this right here because I can't deal with the going in and out business. All right. So we're going to have to go with this right here. All right. All right. So let's 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 go with this. Yeah. It is what it is. All right. So listen to this now. Joshua chapter one, beginning at verse one. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua. Okay the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, speaking to Joshua, arise, go over this Jordan, 
thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Verse three of Joshua one. Every place that the sole of your foot shall thread upon, that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses. All right, verse four of Joshua one. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your coast. All right? Verse 5 of Joshua 1. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. And so much what she's saying, there's no one that's going to be able to challenge you, Mr. Joshua, as my new leader for my people. Right now, these are some very, very strong comments. God is some promises, sorry. God is telling him here. He says, As I love this peace, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. These are some heavy, heavy, heavy promises that God has given this man. Verse 7. Only these are instructions now. See, this is what I love about scripture. And that's why I wanted to, we didn't have to read it all the way from verse one, but I had to, because you see, God is making him some promises, but the promises are conditional or they're gonna hinge on the instructions that God is gonna give him because these instructions now will guarantee him success. These instructions will guarantee him prosperity. There are no sub clauses. There are no shortcuts what God is telling him, what God is saying to him. And God is going to reiterate it. And to reiterate such instructions only speak to the importance of following these specific rules to attain these promises. He says, no nation will be able to challenge you. No form of sorcery, witchcraft, no body of, whether it's a country, whether it's a pope or bishop, whether it's a governor, a prime minister, a president, no one will be able to challenge you and succeed, Mr. Joshua, if you follow my simple rules. If you stick to the policy, you will never fail. You will never go wrong. Boy, I'm trying to help somebody today. I try to, and I what what I want you to see as I'm about to get into verse seven and verse eight. Listen specifically to the instructions, and I'm trying to make a point here because many are going to come and try to offer you a shortcut. Sow this, give that, spin around, put on this red cloth. The God did not say any of that. If it isn't coming from the Word of God verbatim, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. You're talking Spanish. I don't want to hear it. Let me hear what the word, what does the word of God says? I'm trying to help somebody here. I'm trying to help you. All right. Watch this now for seven. Instruction time. Only, who's he speaking to? The leader. Who's the leader? Mr. Joshua. And who did Joshua replace? Brother Moses. And where's Brother Moses? He's deceased. God says, only be thou strong and not courageous. No, listen the prefix, listen the adjective. Very courageous. Now, why is God telling him this? Well, just like you, because there are people that are going to come to challenge the original instructions that God has given you to be prosperous and to be successful in wherever He is directing you or called you to do or to become. Satan offered Eve a shorter cut, but inevitably it was against the original instructions of God. My Lord, I love this. I love this. Boy, I love this. Man, this is so this is so this is so refreshing. See, you got to get upset. You have to have a righteous indignation when someone says to you, you don't need that Bible. And they're not gonna say it that way. They're not going to tell you, put down the Bible, you know, they're going to just tell you, all you have to do is plan this. All you have to do is do this particular ritual. No, if, if the Bible is not telling me that, 
as a rule or a law, a principle to achieve my objective, but you're talking Dutch, you're talking Spanish, and I don't understand none of them things. In other words, you ain't talking to me because I ain't hearing you. People be careful, and I talk about church folk, I put, but I forget the world. We expect for the world to come at us with pyramid schemes, scammers, I expect that. But trust me, these new wave of, of deceivers and destiny robbers, they're gonna come as angels of light. But how are you going to know them by their fruit and what their fruit are gonna display? Whatever they're telling you, I can assure you, it's gonna be contrary to the instructions of God. Very simple. So God given him instructions now, Joshua. So these instructions are important because by following this, he will be able to achieve what we previously read. He says, wherever the soul of your feet shall thread. Well, he says, no nation will be able to challenge you. All of this only if you follow what I'm about to tell you. Don't come to me, Joshua when you men mess up and do it your way and you come but you will sow a seed to God and God must just forget what he, no, 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 no. Do it the right way. Do it God way. Verse seven of Joshua one says, only be thou strong and very courageous, bold, that thou mayest observe to do, to do what? According to the who? The law. That's what I'm reading. According to the law. Not my opinion, not your pastor, not mommy, not daddy. Accor to whose law? To God's law. You try that. If it ain't God's law, you're talking Dutch. You're talking Spanish. You're talking foolishness. Is it? The, the, the remedy that you are giving me, is it the laws of God? Is it is it because if it isn't the laws of God, buddy, I don't want to hear you. I don't want to hear you. I, you don't say nothing to me. Because out if it's contrary to the laws of God, then it is the law of destruction. Very simple. You don't need no half a degree for that. If it... Do not tell me anything. You cannot tell me God says to be strong and courageous, but you say, no, 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 you don't have to do that. Just plant a seed over here. Because I don't read that down. So I shouldn't be shocked that I did plant a seed and nothing panned out for me. When everybody who followed what he was told to do, he or she achieved their objective. You can't blame no, but don't come talk no fool, but nothing never worked out for you. I don't want to hear you are, because you were saying to me, God is a liar. And I don't need to be talking to you if you want to accuse God of lying when you never followed his instructions, but you followed the instructions of mere mortals who gave you their rules to success to enrich them. So he says, verse 7 of Joshua 1, Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Listen now. Turn not, because he know wolves are going to come to entice you. To entice you. You don't, don't listen to Kevin. Don't listen to him. He have church hurt. He, he, it's something wrong with this. Don't listen to this man. He, every time you hear me talking fool, but see it. Don't listen to him. So you see it. No, 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 no. God says, listen. Because he's the all-knowing God, I know how they're going to come at you. So here is my, my more detailed instruction. He said in verse 7, turn not from it. What is this it? The laws of Moses. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left. Why? That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. God says, okay, you're, and the prosperity that he is referring to here is, no nation will ever be able to come up against you. Every, every where the sole of your feet shall thread that I have given unto you. No human, no animal, no demon, no spirit, no principality, no force could prevent you from, from, from succeeding 
in which I have commanded you to succeed in if you follow my specific rule. Listen, don't let no clown, don't let no fool tell you otherwise. Anybody that is telling you contrary to the laws of God is a devil. Very clear. Let me read 7 again. Verse 7 of Joshua 1. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Be very, he said, Joshua, trust me, you got to be bold like Kevin. You got to be bold like Kevin, no matter what the naysayers say, no matter how they come. They ain't going to stop Kevin from preaching this word. They ain't going to stop Kevin from beating on the seed, sowing demon gospel. They're not going to stop Kevin from telling people that they have no obligation to be under nobody's covering other than the covering of Jesus Christ. They could never. So what he's telling Joshua is what Kevin got already. Kevin, be courageous. Because the wolves are going to come for you. The wolves are going to come. But you got to be bold. You got to be. You got to stand your ground. And you're standing on what? Are you standing on your ideologies, Mr. Ewing? No. Are you standing on your intellect, Mr. Ewing? No. Are you standing on your education, Mr. Ewing? No. What are you standing on? On the unadulterated word of the living God. So Ewing. So if they're mad, are they mad with you or are they mad with God? Well, they got to be mad with God because Ewing didn't write no Bible. Talking mess. He says, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not, okay, how tempting it may be, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper. So what is he saying? If you follow my rules, if you follow my laws, success will be the inevitable. You don't have to fight for it. You don't have to sow seed for it. You don't have to play games with it. You don't need a shawl. You don't need a shofar. You don't need olive oil. You don't need anointing. None of that. All you have to do is follow what the manual, the policy manual for life, which is the word of God says, and success will be Seamless. He says, turn not to the right hand or to the left. As a result, thou mayest prosper whatsoever thou goest. Listen to verse 8 now. That's what I wanted to get to. He said, this book, whoa, 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 now God, now hold on, now hold on. Now, yeah, 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 it's going too fast for the brother. What book are you talking about? <laughs> the book of the law. Back then it was the Torah, the five books of the Bible back then, Genesis to Deuteronomy. But of course, that include everything we have today from Genesis all the way here to Revelation. He says, this book of the law, because he's now going to give us the laws and the rules that govern and that will dictate the outcome. By following these rules, I am guaranteed success in whatever area of my life. So I must take the word of God. I want success. You may be barren. You can't have children. What does the word of God says about it? You in poverty. You have no money. What does the word of God says about it? You having challenges with your mind, fear, anxiety. What does the word? Because he says, true, this manual, follow the specific rules as it relates to your condition. If you want to attain peace, you want to attain prosperity, success, you want to attain stability, marriage, whatever it is, the laws, the rules, the principles of what you want should be coming from the unadulterated word of the living God. And no clown should be telling you, just give them money and God is going to fix it because God never said that. Never. Never. This book of the law, verse 8 of Joshua 1, this book of the law, I love it, shall, not might, shall not depart out of thy mouth. What is coming? I want you to highlight that sentence right there. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Highlight that right now. Because there's a, there's a word in this particular verse right here that's going to support that right there. Okay? This book of the law shall not, shall not. He says, 
everything you want to be successful in, everything you want to achieve, it should be based on the word of God. It should be based on the scriptures, not no three-point plan by Kevin, not no four-point plan by T.D. Jakes, not no three-step plan by no, if, the only way I'm going to listen to any of them, if what they're saying is based on the word of God. I don't need your intellect. I don't need your opinions. I don't need, that's what got me in the position I once was in. I need the word of God as it relates to the rules that govern marriage, that govern success, that govern health. What does the manual of life says about it? That's what I need to hear. I'm gonna hear nothing other than that right there. <laughs> this book of the law shall, cycle that, shall not depart out of thy mouth. Highlight that entire sentence. But, but, Thou shalt meditate. That's the word I was trying to get to for the past 15, 20 minutes. Oh, I like that word. I like that word. Because that word meditate is defined in the first sentence of Joshua 1, verse 8. Uh -huh. This is getting juicy. I love it. To meditate. Now, I looked up the Hebrew word, and the Hebrew word is spelled H-A-G-A-R, right? It means to growl, to groan, to, to groan, G-R-O-A-N, to sigh, to mutter, to speak. But in all cases, you're doing it where it's faintly audible, almost as if you're whispering it. The second rendering of that word is to ponder or to consider or to study or to analytically play it back in your mind, in your understanding. So he says here, listen to verse eight again of Joshua one. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. This is a revelation, I hope you're ready for this. But then he says, you should meditate. So to meditate means I must speak under my voice. But about what though? Well, it all depends on what I'm dealing with. So what you mean by Kevin? Okay, you're dealing with fear, right? and you're fearful for nothing, so what do you do? He says, this book of the law, so he's referring to the Bible. So in so much words, he says, now go, go and look in the scriptures and find what the promises are about fear that I have given you. Well, one of them is 2 Timothy 1 and 7. God did not give us a spirit of fear. So he's saying, now you meditate on it. How do I meditate? I mutter, I continue. Father, you did not give me the spirit of fear. Father, you did not give me the spirit of fear, but of love and power and soundness of mind. He says, these are the principles. These are the rules. These are the path to overcome fear in your life. So if someone say to you, hey, you're going to go to a life. Bring a $50 seed right now and God is going to meet your need. You should, you, should, you should put them in the headlock and tell the police come. Because they're telling you, go against the laws of God. God says, don't go to the left, don't look to the right. They're telling you, look to the left and look to the right for other solutions. God says, do not do that. He says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. So therefore, he said, now meditate on it. What am I dealing with? What is it that you're dealing with? Are you meditating? Are you pondering the scriptures? Are you repeating them over and over? Father, I believe that you did not give me the spirit of fear. Spirit fear is trying to overcome me, but I'm going to repeat the word of God. I, God did not give it to me. I reject it. Instead of giving me love, peace, and soundness of mind. Whenever you feel claustrophobia coming, God did not give me a spirit of fear. He says, don't let it depart from your mouth. But you don't want to listen to God or listen to me. You, you need a quick fix. And what did I tell you? In my initial uh, teaching, I said to you that those who've never prepared for success, such as what the laws are doing to you, training you to always resource the word of God for your, your life situation. And not to find quick fixes by giving money and psychologically believe that it's going to happen for you. Because that's not what the scripture is saying. The scriptures are clear. I, I don't know why people get confused here. The script, he says, do not let the book of, do not let the Bible then, do not let the Bible depart out of your mouth. Whatever it is that you're dealing with right now, frustration, a broken marriage, you want to be, whatever it is, God says, please, please come to my word. Come and do your research. Go and Google whatever 
Google marriage in the Bible, Google marriage in the King James Version, Google marriage in the whatever, in the scriptures, Google depression, whatever, in the scriptures that come to you, God says, do not let these scriptures depart out of your mouth. Meditate, listen how he, listen the prescription he gives you. He says, meditate upon it day and night. Why is he saying that? Because the devil of poverty, the devil of fear, the devil of divorce, the devil of frustration is attacking you day and night. But you never challenged it or you thought you were by feeling that you're under someone's covering. How stupid could that be? Or by giving monies to God as if he needed that that is going to help you. When you do that, my friend, you violate it. Uh, Joshua chapter 1 verse 7, when he said, do not look to the left, do not look to the right. Don't look for no other form of solutions or remedy or potion or none of that. He says, stick, let the law of God be in your mouth and now you meditate on a day and night. Trust me, believe me, who've been there. Eventually, it's going to eradicate whatever it is that's been overcoming you. No other way, anyone who told you that everything that happened in their life, they did it through seed is a liar. Because if that is true, then God is a liar. God is a liar. And we shouldn't be reading the Bible if that is true. If you're telling me that because of this one covering, because of you sowing seed here, what, what is the reason for the Bible then? Lies. Scriptures are unequivocally clear. So if you're mad, you're mad with the scriptures. He said, uh, verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate, thou shalt murmur, thou shalt mutter. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Father, I, I am so nervous right now about going to the doctor, going to the dentist. Lord, I feel so fearful, the sound of that drill, the sound of them having to operate on me, but your word, and you said to meditate upon your word day and night. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If God before me, who can be against me? The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, it is that spirit by faith, Father God, that I believe reside in me. Father, I still feel fearful. So Father, help my unbelief. This is called muttering. This is called meditating. This this is called pondering, pondering, meditating, and, 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 and on what? The word of the living God that he said in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, do not, thou shall meditate, sorry, sorry, he says, this book of the law shall not depart, shall not depart out of thy mouth. Why? Because death in life re resides where? Well, in the power of the tongue. Where your tongue is? In your mouth, right? Did he say death and life that is, is residing in your monies? Did he say death and life residing in some false covering someone claims to have on you? People, please wake up. I teach this and beat it down so much because I, I have met so many people who are not prospering in life, who have so much ambition, I'm sorry, so much potential, but they can never, ever advance in what they were called to do. Why, Mr. Ewing? They can't because they have put their belief, their confidence in a human, in monies, in some material game. But never the word of the living God. Never. 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 So when you roll up on Brother Kevin, Kevin giving you scripture. See, see what I do is I, I shift the responsibility from me. I did my part. I gave you the word of God. I am not directing you to me. I am directing you to the God, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How? Through the word of God. He says, the book of the Lord shall not be part of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein. This is your prescription now. God is the great physician. He says, hmm, you got fear here. Uh-huh, okay, I see here. Uh, how long has this been going on now? All my life, God. Mm -hmm. This isn't good. But anyway, you're a blessed person because we have the right antidote for you. So we're going to give you uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, and uh, we want to prescribe you doing this every day, the day and night, as much as you could, while you're driving, when you're in the bathroom, on the throne, in the shower, uh, while you're cutting the lawn, making dinner. We just need you to consistently repeat the word of God till it get deep in your spirit. And you repeat it over and over. And listen to the result that this is going to bring. This book of the law, according to Joshua 1 verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein, the meaning in the book of the law, Day and night, that's his prescription. Listen, 
that thou mayest observe to do now. Don't just meditate now. He's giving you a second set of instructions. He says, yes, rehearse, mutter it, repeat it, okay? Now you must do it. <laughs> I love it. He says that thou mayest observe to do according to all, not part of it, to all that is written therein. And what is therein? The book of the law. Excuse me. Watch this now. For then, I love it. I love it. I, you all listen to this, right? He says, for the, only then, only then, if you follow this protocol, he says, for then shall thou make thy way prosperous. Listen, listen. And then, and then thou shall have, listen, listen, good success. My God, I can bring this baby home right now. Why? Why would he use the prefix or the adjective good before the word success? Well, let's go back to what I said earlier. You see, many will offer you shortcuts that may seem to yield some form of success. But scripture from the get-go, out of the blocks can tell you, not all success is good success. Okay? So a person might say, okay, so a seed or stand on my cover or whatever garbage they tell you. And guess what? You saw some stuff happen for you. Mm -hmm. But a short lift. Or it happened, but some problems came. Many scriptures come to my mind right now just thinking about this. Like for one, the Bible says that the blessings of the Lord make it rich, make you rich and added no sorrow. So why is it that we're calling this a blessing what I have, but all I'm getting is problems? Yes, I got this what I wanted, but the way that I went about it wasn't by following the laws of God. So I did get what I was seeking, but all I invited was problems as a result of that. Why? Because it is not good success. Good success is specifically, I mean, defined in scripture by following the laws of God as it relates to what it is that you're trying to achieve. I try to help you. That's all I try to do. Anybody saying to you, put salt to your door, walk around your house six times, drink this, Go in the graveyard. Do anyone who's telling you pay the spirit because that's what you're doing when you're trying to give God money to do something for you and you circumvent this law. We're going to pay the spirit of God. Here, God, take this $200 and make things happen for me. But we're not reading that, right? And I said in your Bible, I'm reading here very clear. Be courageous. that thou mayest observe to do all that is according to the law. That's what I'm reading. That's what I'm reading here. Why, why is it that we find it so difficult to follow the laws of God? I, I just, to me, this is just so baffling to me. He's saying to you, okay, Kevin, this is what my law says. And any clown tells you otherwise, I'm not going to alter. I didn't alter my law for my own son, Jesus Christ. I didn't stop his crucifixion. I didn't stop his betraying, him being betrayed by Judas because my law is my law. And I'm not going to bend, contort, augment it for anyone. So anyone that's telling you, oh, you don't have to do this, or don't listen to Kevin, or any other preacher who's preaching the Bible, run from that person because they are now giving you the uh, remedy for failure. And you don't need to be a part of, of such a person. So he says here, verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all, to do according to all that is written. So two things we're getting in the first two sentences of this particular scripture in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. He's saying here that the, the word of God should never depart out of him or whatever. Stop complaining that. Stop complaining, oh Lord, things so rough, blah, blah, blah. Stop it. He says, replace that now with the word of God. The nonsense you'd have been saying about your situations, which in you're speaking death to your situation, speak life to it by inserting and injecting the word of God even though you don't feel like saying it, even though you don't feel nothing coming from it, as you say, that doesn't matter. What you are doing is activating the angels of the Lord, according to Psalms 103, verse 20. Oh, how excellent are the angel in their strength who hearken, which is listening unto the voice of his word. Which is, which, what is the voice of God? The word of God. They said the voice of his word. So his words are his voice. So when I keep repeating the word of God, the angels that are assigned to me, according to Psalms 91, verses 11 and 12, for he's given his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways, that have I as much as dash my foot against the stone, these same angels will gather me in their arms. Psalms 34, verse 7, the angel of the Lord encamp or circle around those that fear God. 
and deliver them. But how are they going to do it? When I speak the word of God. So I'm putting the angels of the Lord that are assigned to my life. I am employing them because I cannot tell them what to do. That's not scripture. I cannot, tell, I cannot say angel go and rob the first community bank and bring me back $2 million. It will never happen. What are they going to respond to? They're responding to the word of God. But how are they going to do that? I have to meditate upon the day and night, repeat it, moderate. So when I say, because of his stripes, I am healed, those angels, I don't, it doesn't matter to me how they're going to do it. I, I am not interested in all of the details. I just need it done. And the way that I get it to be done is by giving them their matching orders, not from me, but when I decree the word of the living God. So when I speak the word of God, I'm engaging the spiritual realm. I'm engaging the forces that are assigned to me from the kingdom of light to combat, to challenge, to shut down the kingdom of darkness that are relentlessly fighting against my life. But it will never happen if I'm thinking that, that I can pay an angel or pay God the spirit or pay anyone from the kingdom of darkness and to believe that they're going to change. Like you've got to be super stupid to believe something. When the scriptures are clear, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all. Speak the word. That's what he's saying. That's the first instruction. He says, don't let this word, do not let the book of the law, which is the word of God, depart out of thy mouth, meaning you must consistently repeat it. But thou shalt meditate, which is repeating it over and over, muttering it under your voice, speaking it in your car, in the bathroom, while you're doing your morning jogs, exercise. Stop complaining. Stop calling people on the phone. Child things are so rough. Lord, blah, blah. We don't want to hear none of that. We want to hear the word of God. And guess what? I can help some of y'all right now. Sometimes in order to achieve this, because I had to do it, you got to cut some people off. You got to cut some people off. People send you a bunch of stupid WhatsApp and text messages showing you who just died, who got shot. You don't need to be hearing that. I don't need to be polluting my spirit that I'm trying to cleanse right now. All I want is the word. If you ain't sending me scripture, don't, don't send me nothing. Because I will block you. I will block you. So I want to hear the word of God. Don't send me no what's up, but who gets shot. Don't send me no political nothing. I don't want to hear that. The only thing I want to hear, because I need to see some changing and alteration and augmentation in my life, I need the only thing that's going to achieve that, and that is the word of God that I have specifically given instruction according to Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, that I must, uh, this book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth and I must meditate upon it day and night. A, it shall not depart out of my mouth. B, I should be repeating it over and over. And C, he said, I must do all that is within that book. I must now put action to the voice. Nowhere in there see it. Nowhere. No preacher could ever fool me. No, I don't care who you are. I don't care who. And every preacher on my Facebook, all my social, if you get mad, then get off my Facebook page. Get off my WhatsApp. Get off whatever. I don't care about you and your demonic beliefs. If it is not, and if you're upset about that, you are not a child of the kingdom of God. You are not. For you to instruct people, okay, that if they give you money or your church or whatever, or if they're not under your covering, they can't prosper, you are a liar. You are from the kingdom of darkness. You need to be saved, delivered, and set free. In fact, the Bible says, according to Proverbs 11, verse 9b, he says, through knowledge shall the just, talking to you, believers, Christians, pastors, preachers, whoever, you need deliverance, but it's only going to come through knowledge. You've taken a handed down gospel that has nothing to do with Jesus Christ and instructing people to circumvent the laws of God, to be under coverings, to be under all this foolishness, Never ever instructing them to the simple rules of the living God. Very simple, very clear, crystal clear as a matter of fact. And that is what we should be going after, this right here. And for those of you upset with me, because I'm telling you, think about what you're upset about. You are upset because I'm telling you, those who are telling you otherwise, who are telling you to look to the left and look to the right, what you are discouraged to do according to first, so Joshua chapter 1 verse 7, God says, do not look to the left, do not look to the right. That's what I'm reading here. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper. The only way you're going to prosper if you keep focus on the word of the living God. If you consistently reiterate it in your spirit and now do what it's asking you to do. Now you can see changes in your health. Now you're going to see change. You're talking to a man who's living it. You will see changes in everybody and everyone that was against me, everyone that opposed me, every one of them would shut down. And now they are seeing the results of the one who stuck to the word of God 
in the times when there was no reason for me to do it because everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. But at the end of the day, this is how I looked at it. Okay, where, am I, where, where, where can I turn next? Even if I give up on God, where am I going to go? Am I going to go to the house of Satan and tell him, help me? When he is bound for eternal damnation and there's no form of repentance for him, what, could he, what will he do to make sure I get in heaven? <laughs> I got to be the dumbest dude on this planet to believe such foolishness. Never. So those who are upset and offended, I don't care. That's your problem. You offended with God. You offended with Jesus Christ. This is his law. There's nothing that I'm telling you that I wrote. I am taking, I'm repeating it over and over to show you this have nothing. I have made my decision a long time ago. All my job is to preach, to teach the unadulterated word of God. If you don't like it, then you deal with it. You shouldn't be on this channel. You will have to give an account one day, not Kevin, not me, as I did my part. So the Bible has shown us, and he says here in the last verse of uh, the eight, sorry, the last uh, sentence here in verse eight of Joshua 1, he says that if you do all that is written therein, then and only then shall thou make thy way prosperous, and then shall have the, and, and, and then thou shalt have good success. So I've just given you the laws and the rules that govern success and prosperity in all areas of your life. But Kevin, what about the sickness I have? I just gave you the rule. But Kevin, what about, I always broke, I just gave you the rules. But Kevin, I always haven't, uh, like I'm always rejected, I just gave you the rules. But what do you mean I, I gave you the rules? He said to you, meditate upon the word, okay? He says, do not let the law of the, the, the do not let the word of God depart out of your mouth. That's instruction one. Instruction two, he says, now meditate upon it day and night. Day and night, you need to be repeating it. Whenever those negative thoughts come to your mind, sexuality, adultery, pornography, whatever, you don't sit there and let those spirits beat your spirit. You speak the word of God. Father, I feel weak right now. I feel like turning on, watch some porn. I feel like calling an ex-girlfriend, I feel like cheating on my wife, my husband. Okay, Father God, you say, great is he that is in me. Father God, your word declares that if I abide in you and your word abide in me, whatsoever I shall actually be done unto me. Father, I'm asking you right now for your power to overcome this. Take these thoughts and desires from me. They are not of you. They are not of me. These are evil spirits trying to inject them in my spirit. What are you doing? Giving God back his word. Giving God back his word. Why? Because the angels of the Lord, you are putting them, you are not only employing them, but now you are deploying them through the reiteration or the meditating of the word of God day and night every time the thoughts and desires the feelings come that are contrary to the word of the living God because all the only reason why they're coming is for you to agree so that the enemy can have further legal right into your life but you shut that fool down right away and you say greater see that is in me if God be for me who can be against me I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus spirit of fear I command you to leave even now in the name of Jesus you tormenting spirit of confusion anxiety and panic attack I'm always thinking the worst things that could happen I'm always fearful when I get a call at very hours of the night it caused me to disrupt my sleep the little sleep that I was getting this is not of God but the reason why you're being bombarded is because you're not following the prescription given to you. You're not meditating day and night. Why? Because you don't know the word. Nobody's teaching you the word. When I say nobody's teaching you the word, they're replacing the word with, with foolishness. I want the word. If I'm coming to a place that is called the house of God and all I'm hearing is money and cars and material things, that is a place that I should not be. I came to hear the scriptures because why? He says, do, do not let this law depart out of your mouth. Meditate upon it day and night. That's what he says. Do all therein to do. Then shall you be prosperous. Then shall you have authentic or good success, which is the godly one that will be produced as a result of following the laws, the rules, the principles, the ordinance, and the precepts of Almighty God. I so love this. I love this. Right now, before I get into my next scripture to expand on this even further, right? I want us to look at some laws. I want us to look at some rules that if we follow them, now I see how we're going to prosper in the things that we're seeking God for. All right? So let's look at some rules now, just some of the laws. Okay? So let's look at Proverbs. I like this one here. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 28, verse 27. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 27. And this law or this rule 
And all of these laws and rules I'm about to give you, remember what it said to us. He says, listen, do not let the law depart out of your mouth. Don't sit there in poverty. Don't sit there in frustration. Don't sit there in failure and say nothing. No. He says, do not let it depart. He says, speak it. Then he went a step further. He said, now meditate on it. Ponder it. Consider it. Analyze it. Mutter it under your voice. Now do what it's telling you to do. And then success will be your portion in whatever area of your life. But you're looking for the solution from the scriptures. Not somebody telling you put salt and, and foolishness in mud balls and ammonia around your home. That's not scripture. That's not the law of God. And you know that. So Proverbs chapter 28, verse 27. This is a law now that I would use because I'm tired of lacking. I'm tired of not having. I'm tired of barely making it. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of of hardly making ends meet or every end of the month. I'm so frustrated because I don't know how things are going to pan out. So how do I change it? But let's see. Proverbs 28, verse 27. This is a law to success and not lacking anymore. Proverbs 28, verse 7. Proverbs 28, verse 27 says, He that giveth unto the poor, listen, this is a law, shall, not might, shall not lack. Hmm, that's interesting. Because somebody is telling me from a particular religious organization that if I want to break the spirit of poverty, I must sow a seed to them or their church. But that's what we're reading here. They're saying to me, if you would never want to lack before again in life, give unto the Lord and give it in Jesus' name. That is not what I'm reading here. He said, this is the law, and that's why he says, meditate upon it day and night. Get it in your spirit. So when somebody else says something else, your spirit says, no, 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 no. You got me before because I didn't know the law. But I know the law is now as it relates to success in the area of not lacking. That has nothing to do with giving you pastor, bishop, apostle, pope, whatever. And if you get offended, that on you because you're telling me if you're offended that you're upset that I choose to follow God and not follow you. And you just would have given me the only reason that I need not to be here anymore. <laughs> Don't you try that mess. So listen to this. How do I engage in a law that will stop me from lacking? Well, I am reading here in Proverbs 28, verse 27. He that giveth to the poor, I didn't see church, I didn't see pastor. And this, again, my disclaimer, this is not to say that you don't give to these. I'm not saying to defund them. Yes, you, you, and I always tell you, if you watch my series on tithing, if you watch my series on God economics, I have made it abundantly clear. If you dismiss the tithing stuff that has nothing to do with you and follow the New Testament believer's way of giving, you will have more than enough to give. 10% will be, you will never be restricted to a 10%. And that's why I, I don't know what they're mad about because I'm helping them to get you to engage a law where their success is going to be so great for you that you'll be able to give more than the 10%. And that's what they're fighting. See, tradition got them so tied up. No, 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 no. Don't listen to Kevin. Pay your tithe. Give us the 10%. Even though, even though you follow the New Testament rule, you could give us 30 and 40%. But we didn't want that. No, 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 no. We want to stick to the 10. <laughs> I tell you. Backward. Anyway, he that give it unto the poor, Proverbs 20, verse 27, shall, shall, circle that word, shall not, shall not, shall not lack. So how do I prevent the spirit of lack from taking over my life? Well, let's go back to the original rules. According to Joshua chapter one, particularly verse seven and verse eight. He said to him, don't turn to the left, don't turn to the right. Exactly, meditate upon the word. He says, do not let the law of God depart out of your mouth. Speak it over and repeatedly. Father, your word says, he that give it to the poor. He said, get it into your cerebral, get it into your spirit, get it into your soul. He that give it to the poor, he that give it to the poor, he that give it to the poor. I haven't been given to the poor. Because he says, now meditate on it. Get it in your spirit. Now do it. Three rules. Do not let this book of the Lord depart out of your mouth. Meditate upon it day and night. Ponder it. Repeat it over and over. Now do it. He said, now do all that is requiring you to do. Then shall you have good success. Then shall you be prosperous. That's what I'm reading. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at the scripture. I didn't make up these things. <laughs> I wish I was that smart to make these things up. I wasn't that smart. No. I got to buy by these same rules. So, the scriptures, I love it. 
a crystal clear. He's saying, listen, why are you letting other people with all of these doctors and, and, and bishops and apostle titles fool you? Why do you reverence them more than you reverence your God who tell you the rules? These are the rules to follow if you want to succeed in whatever regard or area of life you you cannot if you follow their rules and not following the rules of God. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack. Listen, but he, the law is still going on, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many curses. So that's why now you see so many Christians in churches broke like the Ten Commandments, living from hand to mouth, paycheck to paycheck. But they've been saved for at least 8.9 gazillion years. All right, they have the Holy Spirit every seven seconds. They know how to backflip, somersault, do the crip walk, do the bump, do the, the, the wahoozy, all of that stuff, all the theatrics they got. But never we could see any evidence in their life. Well, let's look at the law. Who you been giving your money to all the time? Were you giving it to the poor? No, I was giving it to my church. Well, I never say don't give it to your church, but I'm saying, did you give it to the poor? Because I don't know why you're answering a question I didn't ask you. Did you give to the poor? I give it to the pastor. Did you give to the poor? I give it to the church. Did you give to the poor? No. Okay, that's why I wanted to ask. That's why I wanted to the question was, what's what the answer to be? Now, because you are passing the poor on the way to give it to your church, your pastor, the Bible says that many curses, because you ignored them. So in this particular, this is what you call parallel poetry. That's how Psalms are written. They show you the good and they show you the flip side to it. So he's saying to you all the time, you participated in the law of lack and poverty when every time you pass a less fortunate person and you dismiss them. So while you're praying, that's why I tell you, sowing seed can't fix that. Following the laws will, though. Because think about it. You're giving, I mean, handsome sums of money to your church or to your pastor, whoever. You're doing that. And to others that look noble and notable. Excuse me. Oh, my God. Kevin is so generous. I mean, he just gave a check for $5,000. Oh, my Lord. This guy is so blessed. But then you look deeper. Well, gee, I mean, he's always hardship and so he's struggling. Why? I shouldn't. And he's doing such a good thing. Well, he did. He followed the law. I see. I don't care how something looked to other people. I care how it looked to God. And the only way it's going to look right to God if I'm doing it God's way. So while I may have been giving to to the whatever, did I did I follow the specific commandment and giving to the poor? Because he says in doing that, you shall not lack. He says, but listen, listen to the second part of it. But he that hideth his eyes, I see the poor. I'm on the way to church. I see this person really could use a hand up. But I'm trained and dictated to, I mean, I, I have not only taken that baton, but shove it down in my chest, make sure it don't leave me. Then I give it to you because you're not one of us. You're not a Christian and right now you're going to buy drugs and dope with that. You're not going to smoke grass off my hat or money. You dope smoker. Really? Mm, let me see. Let me look at this again, because maybe there's some clauses in here. Okay. But he that hideth his eyes shall have many curses. Mm. Except if the person smoked dope. I didn't see that. Except if the person drink liquor. I didn't see that either. So if you feel that like that's what they're going to do, well, why don't you in the future buy something for them to eat? So when you pull up by the red light or wherever they are, here, I brought this plate of food for you. Here, I brought this drink for you. Here, here are some clothes. See that you don't want to give your money, which I, I, I got you there. But don't make it an excuse not to give. Because what you're doing, not only are you judging them, but you're disobeying the laws that will prevent lack in your life. That's just one of the laws. Let's look at another one. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 3. That's the law of lacking. Now let's look at a law of direction. Okay, you should know this one. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, right? Proverbs chapter 3. So we're looking at the protocol. And that's why I told you there's no such thing as the keys to success. Success has nothing to do with keys or a key. Success has to do with following protocols of the law, which is conditioning you, conditioning you on the way to success. So when you get to success, you're fully equipped to handle success. Very clear. Proverbs chapter 3, beginning at verse 5, I'm going to read to verse 6, because what we're seeking here, how do we attain direction from God? 
there's a business deal you're involved with now, there's a person you're considering marrying or dating or having a relationship with, there's a church you're contemplating whether or not you should go to, there's a particular religious or whatever. Lord, I need direction from you. Well, let's follow the laws. Proverbs chapter three, verse five says, trust mm -hmm, in the Lord with all thine heart. That's the first instruction. Lean not unto thine own understanding. That's the second instruction. These are all protocols. This is the pattern you follow in it. Verse six, in all thy ways, not some of your ways, all of them. This is the third instruction or the third protocol. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. Now, here is the result from following those three protocols. Trust in the Lord of all thy heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In every area of your life, acknowledge God. And with whichever area you don't want to acknowledge him in, that means you want to do your own thing or what you're doing isn't right. Very simple. We ain't going to play games here. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on thy own understanding. The third one, uh, sorry, lean not on thy own understanding uh, and acknowledge him in all thy ways. And he, which is God, whom you're seeking direction from, shall, not might, I, I want you to put emphasis on this word shall, shall, shall do what? Direct your path. How is God going to direct me? Is he going to direct me because I say God direct me? No, who's telling you that? God, please direct me. Is this the man I'm supposed to marry? Is this the wife for me, Lord? Is this the job for me, Jesus? He isn't listening to you. Listen, let's go back to the original text as it relates to the law. Do not let the law of the Bible or the word of God depart out of your mouth. Meditate upon it day and night. And now do. See, when you sow seed, you don't have to do nothing other than give money. You don't have to follow you don't have to trust in the Lord thy God. You don't have to not rely. You not, all of that is thrown out of the window. And this is why nothing is happening for you or whatever happens, it is short-lived and worse things happen because you are not following the specific rule or protocol to give that particular design result. So I need direction. He says, trust in me. Stop looking at other things and, oh, Lord, I ain't enough money here. I ain't got enough money on the bank, Lord. The college fees is like 20, 30,000 a year. Father God, I don't even have $20, $200 on my account. You're not trusting in God. Lean not on your own understanding. Every time you think we're trying to trust God, you find a way where you fall short. He says, stop, stop trying to do it your way. I don't know, maybe if I work two jobs, okay, if I do pop eyes, I'd say if they give me a three-hour shift for Popeyes in the morning shift, then that will give me time to do a little bit of study, and I can do an afternoon shift to Burger King. No, what, what is your problem? He says, remove yourself out of the picture, please. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not on your understanding. Now he says, now in everything that you're about to do, acknowledge me in it. And when you follow those protocols, which are the protocols to direction from the Lord, God says, now I'm going to step in and direct your path. But somebody's telling you different. They're telling you that if you want God to do it for you, you gotta come through me, you gotta be under my covering, you gotta pay a seat to me. People, I keep saying that and I can never stop it because I need you to see how damaging such false doctrines are. This is not of God. And we, this has crept into the churches of God and that's why you see no signs, no miracles, no wonders, because that's another gospel that they're preaching that has nothing to do with what I'm reading right now. Because every rule that I'm going to give you is going to be cemented in the foundation of Joshua chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. Let's look at another one. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 8, verse 32. Okay? Proverbs chapter 8, verse 32. Listen to what it says. It says here, Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children. This is God speaking. For blessed, empowered, fortunate are they that keep my ways. You hear that? You hear that? Did he say blessed and fortunate are those that sow seed? Blessed and fortunate are those that are under cover? Blessed and fortunate are those who committed to an apostolic this or this? No, that keep his ways. And what is his ways? Excuse me, Mr. Ewing, can you kindly clear that for me? His ways are what his rules dictate. So this is why when the prophet or the prophet has prophesied, hey, I see things changing in your life, and God says that, I think I'm going to switch around and do blah. But that's foolishness, sir. I'm not listening to you. You're talking nonsense. Because nowhere in there are you saying, okay, now God is saying to me, yes, he's going to do this for you, but you must obey his law. You must remove sin out of your life. Don't, don't be an after-effect prophet when you tell me in 30 days this is going to happen, I come back to you, or oh, it didn't happen. So you 
you you rest on your cushion. Here's your cushion. Well, you gotta be sin in your life because you know God cannot lie and God used me to speak to you. So are you saying God is a liar? No, no, don't you try that. Why didn't you tell me God is gonna do some stuff with me, but he needs you to follow his rules. He needs you to follow his laws because that's the only way it's gonna happen. And yes, you're sowing the seed up here right now, but I want you to be clear now. The seed isn't gonna bring the harvest. This is a sacrifice you're making, but with your concrete belief is in the word of God as it relates to your dilemma. And did they tell you that? Did they, yes or no? Okay then. Talking mess. So he says, now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep thy ways. I love that. I love it. Let's go now to Proverbs chapter 3. These are rules. Because people say to me all the time, Kevin, so when you talk about the laws of God, are you talking about the Ten Commandments or just the Old Testament? I'm talking again about the entire Bible. Every story in the Bible is embedded some way, somehow, with the laws, the rules, the principles of God, because God used the lives of ordinary men who became great as a result of following his rules. Job and Moses and Abraham, Isaac and Ezekiel were nobodies. They became somebody. They became famous. They became highlighted in Scripture when they did what? Follow the laws of God. Don't you try that? Don't you try that mess? Why you figure that? Get out of that garbage. You will become great when you follow to the letter the laws of the living God. I'm talking to somebody trying to help you. Trying to help you. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 3, verse 33. Listen to what it says. The curse of the Lord, where is it? In the house of the wicked. So you should stay out of the house, right? <laughs> These are rules. Listen now, listen. But he blessed the habitation of the just. Hmm. Hmm. This person A over here saying that they were a Christian for 800 years, right? And they are an evangelist, pope, apostle, doctor, reverend, Peter Piper, pick up pipe or whatever, right? But everything that could go wrong is going wrong. We have another person over here who don't have all those titles, just got saved about three months ago, but they're deep in the word of God, and every time you see them, they're trying to live according to the laws of God. So this rule now is now telling us the root cause behind both of their circumstances. He says this one over here, who have all the titles, who every minute screaming, flipping about in church and doing the somersault and swinging on this chandelier foolishness. He says, my curse is in the house of the wicked. Now, I didn't have a, there's not a label to say they're wicked, but the results speak for themselves. Why is everything cursed in your house? Christian, apostle, apostolic, all this other stuff. Why? Why? Everything going bad for you. But this one who just got saved three months ago, three months ago, but committed to the word of God and they're prospering like nobody business. Well, let's look at the rules. Proverbs 3 verse 33. The curse of the Lord, not Satan, the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. But he bless, why is the Lord isn't blessing you, uh, Reverend? But he bless the habitation of the just. This guy right over here. Mm, just entered Christianity. But he's serious about it. And he's serious about the laws, not the laws of men, the laws of God. He liked Kevin, he liked T.D. Jakes, he liked this one or that one, he liked them. But he is such a shrewd person because when he comes to church, he's conditioned that I came to hear the word of God. Don't tell me anything else but the word of God, because that's what I want to apply to my life. So the Bible said the evidence of that, his habitation, his dwelling place, his residence, and all therein shall be blessed. What am I saying to you? I'm saying to you, like I've been saying throughout my entire ministry, nothing is happening by chance or accident. Nothing is happening because it can happen. It is happening because somebody, some way, somehow, is either engaging or disengaging laws, rules, principles, ordinance of the Holy Scriptures. They may not even be aware of it. There are those who do not know God, but prosper like nobody business. Why? Because they're engaging the rules of never to be in lack. Why? Because they're always giving to the poor. They don't even believe in God. In fact, they reject him outrightly, verbally, publicly. But they're givers. God isn't going to alter his rule because they don't have the label as Christian. They activated a law. Now that law will not get them into heaven. Different rules guide that piece there. So let's be clear. Let's be clear here, man. Don't, 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 don't get this thing mixed up. 
And Christians like them, well, you know, I don't, I, I heard Minister Ewing and, you know, glory be to God, God bless his soul. And I heard him say some stuff there, but really the Bible is for the Christians, you know, and only those that will apply to, well, why are you broke? Why are you suffering? Why are all of your toes off from diabetes? You could barely hear and see all your teeth out your mouth, but you've been serving God for 88.7 trillion years. This is how God rewards his people? Because if that's how he's doing, I don't want nothing to do with him. But I know he don't reward because he is clear. He said, he blessed the habitation of the just. Hypocrite. You could fool me on the outside. But God's laws will become evident in your life. So if you live in wicked, they can show. He said, the host of the wicked shall be cursed. But the habitation of the just shall be blessed. Don't you try that. Don't you try that. Talking nonsense, right? Let's go. <laughs> Let's go to Proverbs. I love Proverbs, yeah? <laughs> Let's go to Proverbs chapter uh, 8, okay? And let's look at verse 34. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 34. I love this. Blessed is the man, I love this, yeah? That heareth me. My God, how, how do we hear God? Because everybody's like, well, Kevin, does God speak to you audibly? Yeah. So how does he do it? Whenever you read this word and you you speak with your voice, that's God speaking to you. No, no, no. What I mean is you, you, you don't hear God's voice. What part of what you what did I say just now you didn't get? You want God to speak to you, right? See, because this is where you all go wrong. Because you all feel you'll have to see a prophet. The, the Bible is a book of prophecy. And you want God to speak to you? Well, you read the scriptures. Read it out loud. Read it into your own hearing. The 34th verse of Proverbs 8. Bless is the man that he, God says you are automatically blessed when you're hearing the word of God. Let me let that marinate in your cerebral cortex for a little bit. All right. You are, listen to me. He said, just, just make yourself available to the word of God and you will be blessed. He says here in Proverbs 8 verse 34, blessed, past tense, is the man that heareth me watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my door, meaning that what, what is the next word of God? What is the next? There are people, uh, I have a community group on YouTube that I post articles every other day, every, you know, so on. And if you read the comments, oh, I was waiting on this, this is speaking directly to my situation. This got nothing to do with Kevin, you know. Kevin was used by God through the inspiration of the word of God to write this, post this Kevin. Now, I don't know who it's for, and I'm not interested in who it's for. I did my part. Now, whoever read it, maybe it's a confirmation to them. Maybe it's something that they needed to make a decision, but it's, everyone can tell you, every article that I write, every preaching that I do is based on what? On what, ladies and gentlemen? It is based on who? On Kevin's opinion? No. On Kevin's ideology? No. On Kevin's conjecture? No. What do Kevin base his writings, his teaching, his preaching, his... Uh, uh, ministering on, on the scriptures. What does he have saturated in those articles? The scriptures. Where does he point us to? The scriptures. Does he point us to him? No. Where does Kevin point us again? To the word of God. <laughs> no. I will not be held in contempt. On the day of judgment, I could stand before the throne of God with complete confidence. I never pillage your people. I never tell them so seeds for miracles and stuff when your Bible say otherwise. I told them the laws. I told, uh, as much opposition as I got for it, I stuck to my guns. I stuck to the word of God, which I encouraged them to do the same. Every writing, every teaching, every preaching, I point them to a myriad of scriptures. Eliminate Kevin, L.A. Ewing, or the picture altogether. Stick to the word of God. Stick them. There are those who will say you're too spiritual. They're going to say you too. Don't mind them. They're the lukewarm ones. They won't bring you where they are. And they're going to beat you with experience. Don't let them bring you there. No. You take the road that leads to righteousness through the word of the living God. You try that. So he says in verse 34, blesses the man that heareth me, watching daily. Sometimes I get so excited when I uh, have my study time because I'm so like anxious, like, like God, I know you're going to say something. I know you will give me a revelation 
out of this world. He gave me a revelation that I, the first time I ministered it was in Texas and I had to deal with the uh, generational curses thing that I would, if I had done my show this, today, I was going to speak on that, but I'm doing, of course, next week. And he gave me this powerful revelation as it relates to generational curses and who all qualifies for it. And then when I got that, man, I, listen, I couldn't wait to mount that stage. And you know how I go. I, I, I share everything that I have. I ain't no price tag or nothing. Let me get this for you. I can't keep this to myself. This thing has changed my life and will do the same for you. That's what I'm interested in. I want to see life change. And the reason why I'm so passionate about this, because trust me, I always tell you my story. I was bound. I was tied up and I was in the church. I, I was hopeless. I was frustrated. I was depressed. I was angry. I was bitter in the church. And guess what? I was preaching. I was teaching. And I was telling them how to live and tell, in terms of the scripture, telling them this and couldn't achieve it myself. Because even though I'm teaching them, I'm still following the rules and the policy of the church, but never the rules and the policy of God. So you see how blind you could be, even though you have a gift. And that happens when you put others above God. So I don't blame them. I blame me. And it was only until I break away from all of that foolishness and say, no, 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 this ain't how it's supposed to be. He has sent me into the world to teach us. I don't have to follow all these foolish protocols. No one have no authority over me. Yes, I must submit to those who preach, teach the unadulterated, authentic word of God. I must submit to that and to those who preach that. Yes, I agree to that. But I'm not supposed to submit to someone who is altering and augmenting the word of God. No. And so this is why I could have preached effectively, but never achieved those things in my life. Because even though I was, and that's what tradition does to you. Even though I'm preaching, even though I'm telling them, do this and do that. But the truth is, my commitment was more to a preacher, more to a building, more to an apostolic, Pentecostal, Baptist, all these other types. And that's why you hear me today. I don't believe in none of that foolishness. I don't believe in no Pentecostal, Baptist nonsense, none of that. There is no Baptist in heaven. There's no Pentecostal. There's none of that. That's what that is all man created. I'm not knocking them, you know. I'm telling you what I don't subscribe to. So when people ask me what denomination you are, I am of the denomination of Jesus Christ. I am a son of the living, uh, of the son of Jesus Christ, of the living God. I ain't none of no, don't, no one is going to label Kevin. That's not, I didn't finish with that years ago. Over 10 years ago, I am done with that. I don't subscribe to none of that. That's why I tell you, I don't believe in spiritual sons, fathers, uncle, cousin, second cousin, third cousin, niece, nephew, none of that. I ain't none of that garbage. I take the word for what it says. I am not adding to it. I'm not taking away from it. You will never put me on that because if you want a life of non-success, then you subscribe to that. And guess what? And that's why it's demonic because you don't even realize when you're more committed to a so-called spiritual father and system than the, the word of God and its rules that you are to be committed to. In fact, you'll be more quick to dismiss the rules before you dismiss your church policies. And that's why I don't, I don't buy into that foolishness. All right. So let's look at Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 21. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 21. It says, he that despises his neighbor, sin it. These are rules. Yeah, because you're saying in a certain part of your life, why am I not achieving? And you could be violating a rule by despising a neighbor. You're always speaking evil of this neighbor. And you don't realize that you are violating a rule that is giving the devil access to your life. Because according to the general rules in Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 14, 15, he says, if you do not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God and to do all of his commandments, which is the laws of God, then shall these curses come upon you. So I choose not to hearken to this where I should not be despising my neighbor. I feel I have a right because this neighbor is irritating, this neighbor is whatever, but the Bible never made any sub clauses that if they're irritating or if they don't believe in God or if they are Buddhist or they are Muslim or they are Islamic, the Bible never said that, that's your rules. The Bible says here in uh, Proverbs 14 verse 20, he says, sorry, verse 21, he that despises his neighbor, he that despises his neighbor, sin it. But what you mean by that, God? I didn't fornicate, I didn't lie. Because why? You're programmed by churches that only the big visible sins that you have to focus on. So nobody saw me fornicating. That don't mean I don't fornicate. They, I do it, but nobody could see me. 
So I could tell them because they didn't see me, I don't fornicate. Okay? I don't lie. I don't commit. I didn't murder nobody. Okay? So, but nobody know of the abortions that you either paid for or you participated in. Nobody knows that. So to you, so what I'm, this is the point I'm making here. And this is how you know you're committed to the system of men and not to the system of God. Somehow, I don't know how you do this, you forget that God has a record of all the wickedness you have done, as well as the good. But you're justified because pastor, Kevin, apostle, bishop, they didn't see me, neither did my fellow parishioners see me. So I could stand boldly here and lie and say, in fact, not only lie, but I could judge others who've been exposed and say, you are evil. My Lord, you cheated on your partner. Oh my God, you are wicked. You're supposed to be married? Where is the love of God in you? Now, mind you, I'm doing the exact same thing, but nobody sees what I'm doing. So I feel, and this is what religion and tradition does, it makes you feel that you have the right. So what is that saying? What is the underlying tone here? The underlying tone here, and you don't realize it, you've dismissed God a long time ago. So much so that you neglect the fact that God is the one watching you. God is the one recording. So what if your pastor don't know? So what if Kevin don't know? Who cares? When you stand on the day of judgment, it wouldn't be before your pastor. It wouldn't be before Kevin. It wouldn't be before the Pope or whoever is your religious leader. It's going to be before the one who recorded all of your deeds. Now, let me see you lie to him and get away with it. Let me see that. Happen. So this is what the scripture call a form of godliness. Okay? This is what the scripture says, that they are always learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because what they're learning is church policies, their tradition, the way that they do it. But never coming to the true knowledge of Christ. Like what I'm teaching you right now, I'm just giving you back the scripture. So it's up to you what you do now. Very simple. It's up to you what you do. What you do, you can row and disagree all you want. That is totally on. I'm not here to debate scripture. I obey scripture. All right? So in Proverbs 14, verse 21, he says very clearly, he that despises his neighbor sinned. He's actually committing a sin. But he that have mercy on the poor, listen, happy is he. How do I, I am a sad, depressed person. I feel so down. My family don't check for me. I feel rejected in life. How do I attain happiness? The rules just told you. They just told you. You're being told, if you want to change that thing, so this. If you want to do that, all these other things to do. No, the rules are saying here, okay? If I want to change my position from sad to happy, what, what, what does it require me to do? I'm going to show mercy to the poor. Well, what is this? You mean I got to take no Xenadrin? You mean I got to take no antidepressant pills? Now, hold on, now, hold on, now. I need to check with these doctors who've been robbing me all this time. So you're telling me if I follow this rule, I could inject happiness in my life? Well, that's what the Bible says. It's not my rules. I only tell you what the Word of God says. I know it's difficult for you to absorb and to assimilate into your... Your, your spirit, man, because all your life you had to do, you had to backflip or do something or somersault or, or something, but that isn't what we're reading. I am reading here. He that despises his neighbor, hey, that's a sin. But mercy, sorry, he that despises his neighbor, sin it, but he that have mercy on the poor, happy. This man is inviting the spirit of happiness in his life. Now, let's see what the scriptures, or let's take note of what the scriptures did not say. That it says, he that is a Christian, you didn't read that. He that is a preacher, no. He that is a teacher, no. He that is a bishop, no. He that is a Christian, no. No, this is for anybody who would participate in this law. So why? Because it's the, this, it's the policy and the manual of life. And this is what you should be meditating on day and night. This is what you should be doing. So God says, you keep walking around, you're telling everybody you're depressed, and all you're doing is compounding your problem because you're engaging a law. Death and life is where in the power of the tongue. If you decree a thing, it shall be established. So why are you shocked that it's been established? Why are you shocked that death and failure and, and hardship is being displayed in your life when you have meticulously Okay, patiently follow the rules to achieve the depression you've attained. And now we're saying to you, listen, you want to bring some sunshine to your life? Go there and help other people. Go there and assist the poor. Do what a God had, of course, and watch God. Father, I believe your word. You said, if we have mercy on the poor, 
happy shall we be. Father, I believe you. What are you doing? What are you doing? Do not let the, the law of the law depart out of your mouth. Do what don't? Second part, meditate upon it. Man. How should I take this pill? Day and night, Kevin. Overdose yourself on it. And then what he says, do next. Now do exactly what it's saying. Then shall you have good success. Good success will in the specific area of the rules that I'm engaging. If I follow the law that says, he that uh, give to the poor shall not lack, that's not going to give me a happy marriage because the rules doesn't say that. He that give to the poor shall not lack, that's not going to give me a big house. I must, whatever, see, that's why, the, that's what he said to you. When you, whatever area of your life you're challenged with, go to the Holy Bible and do a research. Use Google. That's what I do. Go on Google. Put up the word love, put up the word poor, put up the word frustration, depression, and Google King James Version, Google scriptures on this particular subject. And whatever those scriptures pull up, you write them down. Now, it's your, your homework is to go, you know, pull up every last one of them. Get your Bible or get a digital Bible. You pull it up and you read it. Now, what you do, he said, now, do not let this depart out of your mouth, but meditate upon it day and night. Get it in your spirit voice. Keep repeating it. Keep repeating it. Keep repeating it. Keep repeating it. Father, help me. Help my unbelief. Father, take, let your word. Your word says, hide your, hide your word in my heart so I may not sin against you. Now, help me to do this. Now, when you start putting what the Bible says, faith without works. What is faith? The word of God. Faith without works or the word of God without doing it is dead. So I must participate in the scriptures that I'm reading. Nobody's telling me this though, because this is this is why you're frustrated with church. This is why you're frustrated with preachers, and all. You're frustrated because you're not getting the result that God promised. Because you you're, you're seeking that result, but using a different remedy to get there, and you're not using the Word of God. Very simple. Very simple. Very very simple. How how do I achieve success? Following the laws of God. What part of this I'm not making clear? <laughs> so how do I get happiness? Right now, man, you depressed right now after this message, man. Listen, God, I, 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 I'm going to finally do it your way, man. I, listen, I got these extra clothes here. I got these shoes. You know what? I probably don't want to give them this new stuff. Let me just go. Their father lead me to somebody who I can just say, listen, come go with me. Come go with me to the store. Come go with me. I want to just take care of you right now. I want to get a place for you. I want to buy some clothes, some shoes. I just want to do it because I don't want to live this way. And watch the God who cannot lie introduce you to the spirit of happiness as a result of meeting the needs of someone that is less fortunate. And this is why, this is one of the foundations, one of the main foundations of my ministry, helping those that are less fortunate. I sing this over and over. I, I never tell you something no money, right? But I tell you, I say, listen, you ain't got to send it here. Wherever you are, bless somebody whom God is leading you to because I'm trying to get you to participate. Because I know what happened to you. You can say, boy, Lord, let me bless Kevin. Kevin, help me. You know, I ain't done that because I, I, I know what it's like when I follow the instructions of a man or woman of God and God compelling me. Nobody forced me to do this. Bless this poison. That's how it works in the kingdom. No pressure on you. No, no, oh, God say, if you don't do this, you can get cursed or your business go. For God will never say nothing like that. That's a lie. Strictly from the bowels of hellfire. All right. Let's look at Proverbs 22, verse 9. Proverbs 22, verse 9. What does it say? Proverbs 22, verse 9, it says, he that have a bountiful eye shall be blessed. What does that mean? A bountiful eye. Somebody who always given an excess. They don't want to just help you with a bill. They will pay all the bills. They don't want to just assist you with a shoe. They won't buy you a shoe for church, for work. They, whenever they do, they do it bountifully. The Bible says the Lord loveth a cheerful or a bountiful giver. Okay? So the scripture says here in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 9, he that have a bountiful eye shall be blessed. You will, not only will you not lack by always giving an excess to those that are less fortunate, you will always receive an excess. He that giveth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that giveth bountifully in great excess shall receive. You're talking to someone who live in it. I ain't telling you no rubbish. I ain't telling you the man who living it, I, I am living this. So when it's time to to, to help someone, I look, I, 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 listen, I come in true. You looking at this one area, I looking at other areas I can help because what is governing my behavior? Well, what is governing my behavior is the outcome of this. I have nothing to do with you. I just thank God, God put you in my path to participate in the law to bring access to my life by injecting access in your life. I try to help somebody. I try to help you. 
I try to help you. I try to help you. <clears throat> so at the end of the day, when you engage the laws of God, when you engage the laws of God, the laws of God will work for you. Simple. Stop listening to these people, but so see, that's foolishness, that's garbage. Help the person right next to you. This person sit right next to you in church every Sunday, every Bible study. You see their condition, you ignore them. And you don't know that in your ignoring them, you're causing curses to be levied upon you based on the scripture we read earlier. Very clear. He that have a bountiful eye shall be blessed. Listen, for he give it of his bread to the who? To the rich, I didn't read that. To the pastor, I didn't read that. To the church, I did not read that. Who did he give it to? To the poor. That's what I read. Now, if your Bible will be different, could you send me a copy of that? Please take a photo of it and uh, snap shot it and uh, send me an email. All right? I, I'm very curious in reading that. <laughs> okay? He that have a bountiful eye. People, listen, always be bountiful in your giving. And when I say giving, I won't be clear here. As God leads you, trust me, there are many people that's going to come at you when they see your success. When they, Because God will show you off, trust me. When they see your success or when they assume your success, everybody's going to come with a story. All of a sudden, everybody got cancer. They're about to get their foot cut off. All of these things that's happening way before you follow the rules, which they choose not to do. And all of, don't worry about them. You give as you are led. I always make this clear to people. Give as you are led. Because many, well, I hear you say you just give and, you know, uh, we only need $8.9 million to start our business, you know. Yeah? <laughs> That's what you need. You need to go to Central Bank. <laughs> you come to the wrong person. <laughs> so give as you are led. Because you could be sowing into some tainted ground. Into a liar's life. A deceiver, a scammer. I tell my wife this all the time, you know, every, every, trust me, everybody's going to come begging you for something, especially when they know that you're a giver. But you got to be real with them. We have obligations and commitments to other people. They come, they are priority. And if you don't have it, you don't have it. If you've made a, a for example, let's say you have it budgeted, whereby you're going to give three to four hundred dollars a month. All right. And this is what you came to an agreement with God with. Unless God says otherwise, then you go by that. Because... The devil could also use you in the area of giving. Okay, so you got to be wise, and that's why in order to be wise, that means you give as you are led. The Bible says, I think in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, somewhere about there, and it says that uh, you must give according to as you purpose in your heart. And the reason for that is because uh, in, uh, I think, in uh, Philippians 2, verse 13, somewhere around there, it says that, it is God that will in us to do a visible pleasure. So it's God that's willing in you. Hey, give Tom, excuse me, $100. Go buy Tom a bedroom set. Go purchase a vehicle or give Tom your vehicle. Okay, God, I say, have you want to confirm this with me, please? And then he will confirm it for you. Sometimes you may not be sure, like getting you say, okay, God, now, unless I'm due, be on this fleece when I wake up in the morning. If you've got to do it, do it. Why though? Because the goal is I want to do it God's way. I want to follow the book of the law so I can be prosperous. And the only way that that can happen is if I follow it to the letter, according to what God says here, okay? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 28. Proverbs chapter 28. I'm going to look at verse 4, 20. Sorry, verse 14, then verse 20. Proverbs 28 verse 14 says, Happy is the man that fareth always or always reverence God. All right? But he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. This is a very, very powerful scripture. Because remember, we, 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 we read a little while ago, it says that, uh, blessed is the man who heareth me and sitteth at the gate waiting on the next word from God. This man is going to be blessed, whether he realizes it or not. All right? This scripture now is telling us in verse 14, uh, this the latter part, it says, but he that hardened his heart. So God is speaking to him or her, but they're ignoring it. They're dismissing it. And for the most part, if they're church-going people, they're dismissing it because their church's rules and policies and tradition primarily will always supersede the word of God. Now, they wouldn't say that, but it's clear based on their behavior. They'll tell you, and I've met people like that, well, I hear you, Minister Ewing, but pastor didn't preach it that way. 
I don't care what your pastor preach. You you read okay. Read, tell me, read what did the, what did that chapter in verse say right there? I saw I see it, Minister Ewan. I see it. It isn't that I don't see it, but uh, uh, maybe your interpretation is wrong. What? Okay, you interpreted that. Thou shall not steal. How do you interpret that? Do you think thou shall not take a big piece of steel from a building, or or you shouldn't take a steel? What, what do you think it means? So what is really happening? Their tradition, their church policy, their apostolic covering, their all of that foolishness. That's their God, but they don't realize it. So Jesus said another law. Jesus said in Matthew 15, verses 5 and 6. Jesus said in Mark 7, verse 13, somewhere around here, because of your tradition, because of this handed down belief that have nothing to do with the Bible, okay, has caused the word of God to be of no effect or causing it not to produce in your life like it's producing in everybody else's life because they're not allowing tradition to dictate their course. They truly believe in the word of God. Hence, they are following and doing exactly what the word says. So a lot of them are in these places called churches that have nothing to do with God and in total, complete bondage. But to them, they're free because they get to praise the Lord, hallelujah, do all of the theatrics and pageantry of Christianity, but they keep forgetting who is looking at the heart of men, and that is God. And he left there a long time ago because these people refuse. They have hardened their hearts. I'm not going to do it God's way. So what, they, what happens now? They get a Saul end result. All right? So the scriptures are very clear here. Uh, Proverbs 28, verse 14, and it says that happy is the man that feareth always, but he that hardeneth his heart shall fall into mischief. This is a rule, a principle. Let's look at verse 20. A faithful man, uh -huh, I like this, shall abound with blessing. Who is faithful? The one who is committed to the word of God. The one that come hell or high water, they stick into them. But, but pastor, I love you. I appreciate you. I respect you. But you're talking nonsense. Now, you can tell him this publicly. But in the spirit, no, 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 no. Pastor, I hear you. Now, I can chew up the meat and spit out the bones, but I am buying what you're saying. You're telling me right now that if I want healing, I must bring my best seed. You're telling me if I want a wife or a husband, I must bring money. Pastor, you will never see it. You will never see it in this life. Because when I read the scriptures that relate to this, it have nothing to do with giving God money. And I refuse to participate in something that is a tradition that will secure that the word of God never work in my life. Jesus said it's because of your tradition that the word of God is of no effect here. It is not working for you. Don't tell me, Kev, I've done everything. You are a liar. You've done everything that they told you to do based on your church policy and beliefs. But you did not do what the scripture has advised you clearly what to do. Because again, when you make such statements, you're saying to me, Kevin, your God is a liar. And I ain't hearing you after that. All right? Very clear. So verse 20 of Proverbs 28 says, A faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Who's he, who, who is he that's making haste to be rich? The one who sell you pies in the skies. God says there are five millionaires in here right now. Glory be to God. God. And he says that if you bring a sacrificial seed, so what do they do? They haste, they run up there. Oh God, I, I need this money right now. You don't mess up. Why? Because you're not following the protocols. So therefore, if you're not following the protocols for, success, for, for prosperity and good success, then you're not being conditioned on your way there to be ready and prepared to handle the success. That's why I said in the initial stages of this teaching, you're broke like the Ten Commandments right now. If someone give you ten million dollars right now, it'll probably kill you. And when I say kill you, because it'll destroy you. You gonna buy everything. You gonna do you 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 have never been trained in handling your money and budgeting and saving. You've never been trained in helping. And none of that. So this is why the laws and protocols of God is necessary, because why it can be while it can be arduous on the road to success, it's conditioning you, and you don't even realize it. So now when you get to that place and God says, okay, Kevin, I want you to bless so-and-so with $30,000. And I follow that. And that person turned $30,000 into $200,000. Why? Why? Because along the path, they were disciplined in following the laws of God that conditioned them to be good stewards over the blessing that God has given to them. But what this preacher is telling you is, hey, look here, forget all of that. You need to know all of that. Come here and bring a seed. And God is going to bless you. And the money came. 
And guess what you do? You go on, buy a bunch of stupid cars, and you, 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 rather than paying cash for these things, you're mortgaging everything. And guess what? Less than a couple months or a year later, you find yourself not only in the same position, but in most cases in a worse position. Why? Because, because you never followed the laws and the rules that will lead to an end result of success, good success, that's key, and prosperity. Literally, you've been conditioning yourself along the way to never be disciplined in being a good steward, and so you destroy yourself. Mm, I meet these people all the time. If you give them a million, what do you do with a million dollars? Boy, the first thing I get to buy me a big house, man. A big house. I, can, I want me a lease. Now remember, now they have a million dollars, right? I want me a house for at least 900 to 950 grand. Okay. What about insurance? On a million dollar home, you're looking at what? Ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 insurance to secure it. Uh, what about maintenance? What about the rest of your life? What about your kids going to college? What about that? See, this is what happens when you take shortcuts. This is what happens when you believe in the seed, so in garbage. Because it lacks training. It lacks discipline. It's a get quick, get rich quick scheme that have nothing. Hear me. Hear me clearly. Nothing to do with the Bible. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. I didn't realize that when I was going through days when I couldn't put gas in my car. I always tell you the story. Days when I was driving, I had me a little, uh, that was a Volkswagen uh, GT. Nice little buggy, speedy little, I love it. And I'm looking at that gas gauge that is below the red empty line. And I don't know, your mind messes with you because you figure out the slower you ride, the less gas you burn. I don't know what... Uh, mathematical equation I got that from, right? <laughs> but that's what I did. And I'm like, God, I don't have no more money to put no gas in this car. But all of this was training me. Oh, I didn't know none of this. All of this, how to budget, how to save, how to, rather than buying everything that I see, save towards it so you could buy it debt-free and you don't have a bank note or owe nobody. All of this, so when God brought me to where I needed to be, I was well-conditioned to manage and to be a good steward over what I have and, and to now be in a position to help other people. Because before, where I just wanted to sow a seed and get money, I'm only thinking about me. So when I get rich, I can buy me a nice car because I need to let the public know that I, I got it going on. But through the protocols of the scriptures on how to get to that point, no, 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 I don't need an expensive car. I don't need to prove to nobody I'm doing well. I don't need to do that. I can ride a regular vehicle. So I'm not living for anybody. Why am I putting that pressure on me? Now, when I would have accomplished the things that I need to do, and I choose to buy me a nice vehicle because I like it, not because then that's what you do. But you are conditioned. You don't realize it because the prosperity gospel, the get-rich-quick schemes, especially when you have pastors and bishops and so on, bringing people to their churches to counsel you on pyramid schemes and how to join this particular uh, get rich. That, that, that should never be. That should never be introduced into the house of God. You should All of these rules in the Bible, I'm telling you right now, there are myriads more. You're telling me these are not sufficient? You, you're telling me you could bring in somebody who got a maths degree or MBA in business to bring them here to teach up? So, the word of, so you're telling me the word of God isn't sufficient? And this is when I got it. This is what I got. I said, no, 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 this is it for me. This is it. Listen, when I tell you, it's almost like I signed a contract. That was it for me. That was it. And I watched my life take off. When I followed the simple, very simple, I never went to college to learn this. I, I stood right out in my bed, asking the Lord for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and followed the rules. And I, I literally watched my life did a U-turn. I, I watched it. I watched a 180 degree turn from barely making it, from just enough. I, and I couldn't sometimes, I was talking to my mother, I was by her yesterday, and I was telling her, I say, man, mommy, sometimes I'm just such an awe that how could people not believe in God when I haven't seen the hand of God literally shift my life and it had nothing to do with a seed except for the seeds, which is the word of God. That's it. And again, let me be clear. I keep telling you this. I'm not telling you don't sow seeds. I'm not telling you don't give to the pastor. I'm not telling you don't give to the church. I'm showing you how to develop you to be a source of wealth, 
to bless pastor, to bless bishop, to bless the house of God, to bless your fellow members, to help other people in need, but it cannot happen if you're just giving your money to a place that God never told you to. And when I say that, he tell you ex exactly what to give that money to. Anyway, we in there. So let's look at this last two scriptures, Proverbs 21, verse 21. Proverbs 21, verse 21 says, it says, he that followeth, these are all rules, after righteousness and mercy, findeth life. Hmm, that's interesting. Hmm. I'm saying mm, because how many times have you, you're up late at night and you see this information? Do you want a beautiful life? Are you tired of the same old, same old? What about that nice home? What about living on the beach in Tahiti? And they tell you all this mess. Well, if you join so and so, we will offer you this. And the bonus is, because every time you think that's it, and one more thing, if you if you sign up right now, and you will have the pathway and the keys to a prosperous and beautiful life, and you will be happy all the days of your life. Garbage, nonsense, foolishness, utter dung. The Bible says, he that follow it after, not riches, but righteousness, Proverbs 21, verse 21, he that follow after righteousness and mercy. Now, what is righteousness? Righteousness is doing things God's way or doing things the right way, which is God's way, because you can do things the right way according to you. But righteousness is doing things the right way according to the scriptures. So it says, he that followed after righteousness and mercy, what is he going to discover on that path by following that particular protocol? It says he will find life. Proverbs 21, verse 21. He that followed after righteousness and mercy findeth life. Righteousness and what? Honor. So the anointing of honor will automatically be on him when he followed that protocol. Not when he buys an expensive car. He's seeking or she's seeking honor or or looking to be validated by the material things that they accumulate in their life. But that is not what the scripture is telling us. The scriptures are saying if you keep your focus on God and the way he's asking you to do it in that particular regard, honor will be automatic. They will, they will automatically honor you. In fact, if you follow this, even if you're walking or driving a raggedy car, the anointing of honor will be upon your life because you follow the laws, the rules, the principles of God. Very, very, very clear. Very clear. Very clear. Proverbs 16, verse 20. Proverbs 16, verse 20. What does it say? He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good. You all listen to this, right? The word good there, let's explain that word because it can give more understanding to the scripture. Proverbs 16, verse 20. He that handleth a matter wisely, that's the key, shall find good. Handling it wisely, meaning that you're not looking for a selfish solution. You're looking for a solution that for the most part, all parties involved will benefit from it. But it says here, he that handleth it wisely, the person who's handling it wisely shall find good. Or the word good there, if you look up that word good there, it means it's going to be beneficial to him as well as others. So he's saying here, somebody came and did you wrong. Right? And you know what? Let me use something that is very, very notable in my teaching. Remember I did a teaching on sending prayers back to senders were witchcraft, evil prayers. I told you I once did it. I told you I once taught those prayers. And again, I did it because like most preachers, especially young preachers, we take the baton from our leaders and we go with it without researching it for ourselves. And that's what I did. When I realized the error of it, most of you who know me, watch me, I came back, apologized for what I did, showed you the error in what I was doing, and showed you the exact way that it ought to be done. I did that, I had no pride or nothing to do with it because my job is to keep you on the right path because my governing thought is even though whether I apologize to you or not, I have a God to face. And that's how I assess my life and that's how I do things. Got nothing to do with pride, got nothing to do with other people. I have to do it while I may be misleading or lying to someone, God is still observing my heart. 
So I came back and I said, listen, folks, I prayed evil prayers back to sender, meaning that if someone said in witchcraft after me and curses, I said it back. And listen what I'm saying in the name of Jesus. All right? Again, preachers that I know of, this is how they prayed. This is how I was instructed to pray. And I found it to be quite satisfying because, hey, you kill my dog, I kill your cat. But then when I study the scripture, Jesus says, hey, no, 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 no. Bless those that curse you, man. You get us from. Yes, in the days past, back in David, those days and so on, they had a right to do it. The law was an eye for an eye, a tooth for two. So when David made those vicious prayers in the Psalms, Lord, break their leg, they tooth for two. He had a right to do it because the law allowed it. Jesus came and he amended the law. And Jesus says, hey, no, 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 no. That don't happen anymore. Bless those that curse you. Not curse them. He's, he's making an amendment now. So an amendment means that we're changing the rules so you cannot go by the old or the former rules anymore. Because a lot of Christians came at me, no, 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 suffer not a witch to live. You know, they same people will tell me, oh, we shouldn't abide by the old testament anymore. Only when it's convenient for them. <laughs> it's so funny. So anyway, I said, no, 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 no. He says to bless your enemy. He says to bless those that curse you specifically. And pray. He said, now pray for those that despitefully use you and say all manner of things against you. Boy, that was tough. And now it made so much sense because during the time when I was praying against people who was doing me wrong, I mean, outright, the more I prayed against them, the worse things got for me and the more they prospered in what they did to me. I couldn't understand it. It used to frustrate me, but it didn't stop me from praying those prayers against them. It's because I felt, and that's what the devil does. He make you feel a of, of a self-satisfaction, Father God, every piece of obey and voodoo, I send it back 10,000 fold, cripple them, Jesus. God, God wasn't answering none of those prayers. And any of you got an answer from that, that answer came from the devil. There's a gentleman who came from the background of witchcraft, he's a bishop now, a pastor, and he made it very clear in his teaching, whenever you pray prayers back to sender, you're engaging the forces of darkness, have nothing to do with God. And, and it couldn't have been more clear to me, but I, I knew after reading the word. Because God said, he says, no, 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 you don't, you don't do that. If it has been changed, it is, you cannot amend it on your own. So what I did, I came back as I saw the, the gravity and I told all of you, my followers, you know it. I, I've got it on video. I said, listen, I was wrong. What I taught you was wrong. It was totally contrary to the word of God. I showed you the scripture. I took you back to the Old Testament. I showed you the original law. And I showed you that law was valid all the way up to Jesus Christ. Jesus now come and he amended it. So we cannot go back to that. So people keep sending me all kind of email. Well, David said, Lord, do this and do that. I said, and David had a right to do it. I'm not discounting what he did, but you don't have the right to do it. They got mad. You know, and a lot of them are, Remove themselves from my Facebook, which I love because I have so much people who wanted to come on. I have over almost a thousand people right now with pending requests on Facebook, but on my poisonous page, it only could take 500 people. So when they took themselves on, it was a blessing to me because <laughs> I bring somebody else on. So I want to thank you for that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't you try that? So anyway, so when I saw that, I saw that amendment now. We got to go by the new rule. We cannot, we, we cannot uh, sit back. Yes, I know. We cannot sit back and, and, and make our own laws. All right? So going back to that same example I was using you, based on the scripture here, Proverbs 16, verse 20, he that handle a matter wisely shall find good. So I went back. I'm doing it wisely. And I says, listen, all of you who I taught this to, I was wrong. It wasn't right. And I now showed them the right way to do it. And all by scripture, I gave it to them. All of it was by scripture. And mind you, had I gone by scripture, did my own research initially before I started preaching it, I would have not found myself in that situation, which was, an also, which was also another teachable moment for everybody, including me. Go by scripture. If the scripture isn't saying it, you can't make it up and you can't go by what Kevin or preacher or apostle or whatever say. If it is not by scripture, because see, scripture should be your guide. Scripture will dismiss all the naysayers, but you can't make it up and try to make it scripture. So I went back and I said, no, this is wrong. And I showed them what to do. And at first, then when I tell you they beat me down, oh, they beat me down bad. But then months later, I was getting a shift in emails. Minister Kevin, I strongly disagreed when you said praying prayers back to sender was incorrect. 
especially when you use the term they were witchcraft press. But I've proven now. I see the point. I see that those who followed the scriptures I gave them saw the changes in their lives from stubborn situation that went on for years by praying evil prayers back to sender that never changed. But now that they implemented the new amendment, they saw the change like I did. So that's when the Bible says that he that handled a matter wisely shall find good or shall be beneficial, all right? Then it goes on to say here, and whosoever trusted in the Lord, happy is this person. This person would be very much, if their trust is in not mankind, not in Kevin, not their apostle, not their apostle, not their preachers, if their trust is in God, they would always have a sense of happiness. Uh, just to stray with just a little bit, uh, two mornings ago, I, I woke up from a dream. I didn't remember the dream. And I couldn't tell whether it was good or bad dream because I didn't remember it. But anyway, I did my regular father, this dream is from you. I come in agreement with what you want to do. If it is not, I reject it, right? But for some reason, like most of I was, I was very, very happy. Very, very happy. Now, I'm always in a happy mood. I can be honest with you. Always in a happy mood for the most part. But for, for two mornings, I was in an extremely happy mood. And the thought hit me. My happiness wasn't based on something I'm looking forward to, like a car or a new home or or something great happened to for my children or whatever, or my wife, none of that. Guess what my happiness was? Because this, and I know this was the Holy Spirit speaking to me. My happiness was, Kevin, you have Jesus Christ in your life. That no matter what happened right now, Kevin, if you were to die right now, you have insurance, you have a policy for the afterlife. So my happiness wasn't based on something materialistic I was looking forward to or something that I had. My happiness was that I have come to the revelation that I need Jesus Christ, that I'm not going to live forever. I'm going to die one day. But but prior to me becoming a Christian, where I used to be so fearful that, boy, if I die right now, and this is how blinded I was, I knew that if I didn't wake up the next morning, I was going to hell because I knew I wasn't saved. And I lived with the torment that I didn't know God, that I could be shot, I could be killed in a car accident. But then there were these stupid thoughts that I would have if, well, if I die or if I know I was dying, I was in a car accident, you know, I would say, Lord, forgive me. Like I'm guaranteed that. And what really wake me up, I read a scripture in Proverbs chapter one, when God says, uh, when the day come, when he would reach out to you for so many times and you refuse him, and he said, when your calamity come, I will laugh at you. Read it, Proverbs chapter one. I will laugh at you in the day of calamity. And when I read it, I say, boy, the devil had me fooled all this time that, I could have pulled one on God that I could live a sinful life, fornicate, lie, cheat, do a bunch of fool. And if something would have happened to me and I know I on the way out, I could just squeeze in heaven by saying, oh, Jesus, forgive me, Lord, forgive me. He said, no, in your day of calamity, because you've rejected me on the times of when I reached out to you, he said, I will laugh at you. Boy, that hit me like a ton of bricks because I could take mommy, my wife, children, I could take anybody laughing at me. But when the creator of all creation, and after him, there's no other hope. When he said, I will laugh at you, I say, okay, that's it for me. No, you won't be laughing at me because no, 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 no. So I, I, the more I learned the word, the more I understood the word, the more I realized that as a non-believer, I was literally skating on thin ice. And at any moment outside of the grace of God, it was only him that sustained me because he knew my future, I guess. He knew what I would become and I would spread his word. But I'm saying to people, I'm just throwing this in here right now. If, if you don't know God, it don't make no sense just being a part of Christianity for material things. You have a soul that if one day you die, you don't have a spare soul as a backup in case that soul wasn't right. You got to get it right now. Okay? You got to get it right. So let me leave you with this final scripture and then uh, we're done. So, so far, I've done two parts to this. I've given you the laws and the rules as it relates to prosperity and good success. There's no keys to success. There are laws, there are protocols to success. That's what you must follow. And the reason why there are no keys is because a key turned the door and make you be a part of something that you didn't have to work for. You just open the door and take whatever it is. What the laws and the rules does is conditioning you to be a wise steward over the success or the prosperity that you're about to come into. This is why when you get it, you don't go back to where you used to be. In fact, you build on what you receive because of the education you achieve by following the laws, the rules, the laws, the principles uh, as it relates to success and so on, right? 
What I then do is I then take you into just regular laws of the Bible, but requires you to meditate on these things, day and night, whatever, and then do it. You have to now follow it. That's why the Bible says, faith without works is dead. Faith is the word of God. So it says that the word of God, without doing the work that the rule is prescribing to you, then dead mean you will not get the result or the determinant result that it promised. It won't happen. So you have to be a participant, not just by word, quoting scriptures and meditating and pondering it, but you have to now engage the laws or the rules of God, and then shall you make your way prosperous. Then shall you have good success according to the laws of God. Now, I'm going to end with this, and that is going to be on Psalms chapter 1. Let's go to Psalms chapter 1 and we finish, okay? Psalms chapter 1. we a little long today because I'm making for the time that I wouldn't, didn't do any lives with you, okay? Okay, so I know you you, you probably miss all of this good, good words, so I'll just throw the little bonus here for you, all right? Psalms chapter 1, I love it. And now this here is only going to support everything that we've said so far, but mainly going back to Joshua chapter 1, specifically verse 7 and verse 8, as it relates to giving us the rules, okay? Because God said to Joshua, Joshua, listen, as I was with Moses, shall, so shall I be with you. Wherever the sole of your foot shall tread, that have I given unto you. No nation will be able to stand against you. I guess just as I was with Moses, I will be with you. Now God could have ended right there and say, okay, Joshua, you don't have to do nothing. I didn't give you my word, so this is going to happen. But no, these were all conditional. Because when you get to verse 7 and verse 8 of uh, Joshua chapter 1, he says, okay, now, watch the rules now. If you do this, if you do that, if you meditate, if, if is a conjunction, meaning that whatever was before if, that you were promised cannot be achieved if you didn't do what after the if says. Again, I have to say this again because I need you to get it. This is why seed sowing for miracles, seed sowing for husband, wife, car, home, promotion is utter demonic garbage foolishness. Covering under somebody, if you're not covered by a pastor or a bishop, you will never prosper. It is all lies and it's not a part of the Bible. Follow the laws of God and you will see these things happen for you. All right, now, Psalms chapter one, beginning at verse one. Blessed is the man, mm -hmm. blessed is the man, circle that, man. You didn't read blessed is the Christian, you didn't read blessed is the Pope, blessed is Kevin, blessed is the believer of Jesus Christ, no. This law is general. Anyone, anyone that engages what it's about to tell you to be blessed, will be blessed, will be empowered. And again, let me be clear. This has nothing to do with their salvation because they could receive the blessing by following these rules, but if they did not confess with their mouth, believe in their heart, be baptized, they will never enter the kingdom of God. So don't let's mix these things up. So the Bible is a book of laws and rules and principles. It is the manual for life, okay? So he says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly or do not take advice from ungodly or evil people, nor stand in the way of sinners, meaning that he or she does not become an obstacle for someone coming to know Jesus Christ or coming to know the knowledge of God, all right? Nor sit in the seat of the scornful, meaning that they're not sitting in the seat of a proud person, okay? So the Bible says that if a person follow any of these here, they are blessed. Again, this has nothing to do with salvation. This has nothing to do with them being saved. That's a whole new different set of protocols to achieve that particular objective, all right? So he says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of their God. He is not receiving evil counsel, nor standing in the way of sinners. He's not becoming an obstacle for those who are sinners to come to know God, nor sitting in the seat of the scornful. He's not a proud person. But, this is the key, but his delight, his joy, his pleasure, listen to this now, is the law of the Lord. My God. Why? Because he knows this is the key to everything. This is the key to sustainability, to joy, to happiness, to promotion, for being aligned with the right wife, the right husband, whom God has already chosen for you before the foundation of the world. But because you never followed the protocol of Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6, what you did is you didn't trust in the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul. You did things by with your own understanding and you didn't follow him in all your ways. So therefore, he was not the one directing you to that woman. He was not the one directing you to that man. So you marry that man or you marry that woman that had nothing to do with God, and all hell break loose in your life because you became a part of something that had nothing to do with God. 
you try to call it God, or you believe what the preacher said, when he said that whom God put together, let no man put God not put that together. You put that together. Y'all put that together. All right? Now, many people come talk fool to me, and I always tell them, okay, well, if you believe that whatever people get married, God put together, so those little young girls, those little 13 and 12 and 11-year-old and 10-year-olds that are marrying men legally in India, okay, when two same-sex get married, so God put that together to them. Seeing that you want to take that route. Let's be wise. Don't, again, don't let's read to debate. Let's read to find understanding to live according to God's law. We're not looking for, you're not going to get a debate from internet right now because I go by the rules. So this is how we look at it. So not because a preacher said, now whom God, and he's quoting the scripture over these two couples, whom God has put together, let no man, I, I hear you, I hear you, I hear you, I heard you. But did God really put this together? Because first of all, these two here now, they came up because both of them were married before and both of them cheated on their partners and that's how they got together. And she doesn't know that this guy is homosexual. She has no knowledge of this. But she can learn later though. Or he can learn later. Did God still put it together? Let's be real. Let's be real. Like, and I don't care if you disagree with me. I ain't into none of Whatever you disagree with, I tell you what the scriptures are. But anyway, being there. So the Bible says in verse 2 of Psalms 1, but his delight, this guy's delight, He's not engaging in any of those three things in verse one. He's not standing in the way of sinners. He's not a proud person. And he's not taking counsel from the ungodly. But the Bible says his delight now, his delight is in the law of the Lord. Listen, and in his law, meaning the law of God, does this guy, listen to this prescription again, meditate when, how does he do it? Day and when, day and night. So we see a correlation here with uh, Joshua 1 verse 8. Because Joshua 1 and 8, 1 verse 8 gives us the, 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 the protocol or the laws, not the key, the protocol to success. It cannot be a key because if you push the key in and turn it, you walk into success. And that's not how it happens in the kingdom. You are trained for success through the laws, the ordinance, and the principles of God. So that you will not only appreciate success, but you'll know how to manage success. And not end up in the formal position, dislike position that you were formerly in, Right? But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does this guy meditate day and night. Okay, beautiful. What's the results? Verse 3. And he, who is this he? The same one that takes a delight in the law of God. Love it, just like heaven, who meditates upon it day and night, just like heaven. Verse 3 now is going to give the result in more detail of what Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 said. Joshua chapter 1 says, do not let this book of the Lord depart out of thy mouth. That's what he says, right? He said, but meditate upon it day and night. That's chapter main, protocol number 2. And he says, now do therein, or whatever the Lord is telling you, you must do it. Then, now you're going to see the result. Then shall you have, then shall you be prosperous, and then shall you have good success. So, Psalm chapter 1 verse 3 is now going to give us the deep, more detail or root to what we would have read. In Joshua 1 verse 8, the latter part. So after delighting in the law of the Lord and meditating upon it day and night, according to Psalms 1 verse 3, verse 2, sorry, verse 3 now shows the results. And he, the one who meditates day and night, I love the, I love it. And he shall, let's see, you see that word again? You see that word? Even as we've been teaching this thing, you, you did not see might. You did not see maybe. You did not see other conditions. He says, shall, meaning that it will happen, must happen, have to happen, because this guy followed the rules to the letter. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He's given us a metaphor now. He's given us a simile, okay? So if you is, is, is equivalent to, okay, a tree by the rivers of water. The tree definitely needs water in order to, to sustain itself. It didn't say it's going to be like a tree where the river or the water is way up the road. No, right there. So it's having this consistent, consistent uh, supply of resources. So he's taking the word of God, what it should be to you. If you're meditating upon it day and night, he says, he's using a simile now, you shall be like a tree. He didn't say you will become a tree. Excuse me. You shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Listen, listen, as a result of it, that bring it forth. His fruit, uh-huh, in his season. So what is scripture saying? 
The scripture is saying that before he was using the word of God as his source, before he was meditating upon a day and night, people was telling him, the pastor say, I see your season coming. The prophet say, see, I, God say in the next season, glory to God, I see this happening lies because if he's not meditating in the word of God day and night, if he's not re rehearsing this and doing it, guess what will happen? Seasons will come and go and he wouldn't even realize it. Seasons will come and go. He don't even know. Even when good coming to him, he wouldn't even realize it. Why? Why? Because whenever you do something outside of the word of God, but seeking a God result, you are under curse. Why, Kevin? Because you're taking the rules, you're taking the amendments, you're taking the laws of men and trying to insert them in the word of God to get the result God said you're supposed to get if you had followed his rules. You, okay, Kevin, I don't understand that. Well, hold this right here for one second. Let me prove my point. We're coming right back here. So let's go to Jeremiah. We're coming right back here to wrap this up. Jeremiah uh, 17, okay? And let's look at verse 5, okay? Listen to this now. Jeremiah 17, verse 5, because it's showing you a law as it relates to a curse over a person. Jeremiah 17, verse 5 says, Thus said the Lord, cursed, E.D., past tense, be the man, listen, listen, that trusted in the Lord. I didn't read that. No, no. Cursed be the man that trusted in man. He have more trust in Kevin. He have more trust in his pastor. He have more trust in his apostle and prophet and prophetess than he have in, the, in, the, in, the, in God himself. Cursed be the man that trusted in man, listen, and make it flesh his arm or make a human being his strength or his source. Listen, and whose heart departed from the Lord. But Kevin, his heart didn't depart from the Lord. He comes to church every day. Huh? You don't see him jumping up and down saying hallelujah? Yes, externally. But listen to what the scripture says. See, you don't read with understanding. You read to debate. The Bible says, it didn't say, it says, and it didn't say, and whose hands departed from the Lord. Hallelujah. Whose performances departed from the Lord. It didn't say that. Whose heart, which you cannot see, has departed from the Lord. You don't see that. But if you have spiritual eyes, you could see because they're more committed to their leaders than they are to God. God says, don't fornicate. They ain't listening to that. Well, pastor who I serve didn't see me. So once he don't know, then I haven't done anything wrong. So clearly you're dismissing God. So the Bible says your heart has departed from God. I only tell you what the scripture says, whose heart has departed from the Lord. Listen to verse six. For he shall be like, mm, I'm going to see the opposite of what I would have read in Psalms 1 verse 3 with the guy who meditated upon the word day and night, the guy who delighted in the laws of God. It says that he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that shall bring forth his fruit in his specific season. No season that was assigned to this man will go by unfruitful. As long as he stay in the word of God, he is guaranteed produce and a harvest in every season of his life. He will, he will participate in every season, but let's listen to the guy whose trust is in man. Verse six says of Jeremiah 17, for he, for he, the one whose trust is in man, for he, sorry, for he shall be like the heat in the desert, uncomfortable, miserable. Listen, and shall not see, listen, when good cometh, he is so miserable because his fate is in another human being, because things aren't manifesting the way it should be, because he's not meditating day and night, he's not delighting in the laws of God. He's why? Because whatever pastor say, whatever Ke well, Kevin say this, and Ke are you doing what the Bible say? Not Kevin, not your pastor. Are you doing what the Scripture said? Listen, I appreciate you appreciate me. I appreciate you that you think I'm a great teacher. But listen, I ain't caught up in there. Listen, I am trying to help you. Be caught up in the word of God. Let that become your source. Let that become your life. Not me. Not me. Because at the end of the day, I cannot be your power of attorney when you stand before God. And that's why you will never hear me talk garbage to you, but I'm your covering. It's absolute dung. It's foolishness. You have an obligation to study to show yourself approved. You have an obligation to forge a personal relationship with your God. No human being, the Bible says there's but one God. 
and one mediator, one middleman, one negotiator between you and God. And who is that? Jesus the Christ. Any fool who tried to put himself in the position of Jesus the Christ is nothing but a fool. To believe that you have to go to go through him or her when the scriptures are unequivocally clear. There is but one, not two, not three, not four, one God. And one mediator, one negotiator, who is negotiating your salvation out for you to God, Jesus the Christ. How did your pastor, how, 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 how did Kevin the teacher, how did the apostle, he himself have to go through the one mediator. So what gave him the right to be your covering? To protect you from what? But I ain't going to today. That's a whole new something else. I wouldn't even go to today. But I'm trying to open your eyes. The Bible says, curse be the man that puts his trust in man. How much clearer that it, that it has to be for you to understand that. I am not telling you to despise your pastor. I'm not telling you to despise your spiritual leader. The Bible says we must submit to them. I am in total 3 billion percent agreement. But submit to what though? I'm submitting to the man who is preaching the unadulterated word of the minute he start preaching another gospel. Like Paul made it very clear in Galatians 1 verses 8 to 9. He says, if any of us here or even an angel come preaching another gospel, let that man be a curse. So why should I submit myself to a cursed human being who made a decision to go against the word of God? So when the Bible says, submit to your leaders, submit to those who are preaching the unadulterated word of God. You have no obligation in submission if they are going against the laws of God, because you will be equally as guilty. Because according to scripture, go read it yourself, Galatians 1 verse 8 and 9, the person that is preaching another gospel is under a curse. You are too, if you keep following them. Why? Because we're reading it right here. In Jeremiah 17, verse 5, thus said the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusts in man. You trust in the so-called preacher Kevin, teacher Kevin, and Kevin telling you everything against the word of God? He says you are cursed. They are already cursed because because Galatians 1, 8, 9 tell you that. But you continue to follow because you believe more. But they said in what the word says, God says you are cursed also. And it says in verse 6, for he, the one who is cursed because he's trusting in another person and not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for he shall be like the heat in the desert, very uncomfortable and miserable, and shall not see when good come, but shall, listen, inhabit the parched places. The word parched means dry, arid, no water. The Bible says the opposite to the guy in Psalms 1 verses 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the what? The rivers of who? Water. Why? Because the Bible also says that he will bless the habitation of the just. See, the scripture, not Kevin, you know, the scripture says you will know them by their fruit. I don't care what they tell you. I don't care how much titles. I don't care how much gowns they wear. I don't care how much they are, they are, are, are worship around this world. I will know you by your fruit. I am looking at the rules and the rules are speaking against you. Don't you try that? So verse 6 of Jeremiah 17, for he shall be like the heat in the desert and shall not see when good come. My God, people come and bring him good, but he can't see it. He's so miserable. He's so frustrated, but he will never connect it to the, to, to the fact that you're following the rules of men and dismissing the word of God. Because verse six is the sole result of a person putting their trust in mere mortals and not the word of God. For he shall be like a heat in the desert and shall not see when good cometh but shall inhabit the dry and the parched places in the wilderness. Not only is the, the ground uh, uh, metaphorically arid and dry, meaning that there's no, nothing being produced in your life, he says, but you're also in the wilderness amongst the wild. He says, in a salt land, not inhabited. You're there by yourself, my Lord. Mm -mm. So let's go back here now to Psalm chapter one to just close this off. So Psalm chapter one, here we go. Verse 1, verse 2 now. Go back to verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And what's going to happen to this guy? Verse 3 says, this is the result. I love results. I love results when we follow rules. It says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, I love it, that bringeth forth 
his fruit. You know what the Bible is saying? Kevin, listen to me carefully. If you follow my law, my rule, my comp- no devil, no demon, no spirit could stop the preordained fruit that I have ordained for your life. No human, no witchcraft, no sickness, no disease. They must all come to a screeching halt as long as you follow my rules. Not the rules of men. If you follow my rules, Kevin, if you follow my laws, Kevin, do not let no one bamboozle you. Kevin, don't let the opposition, don't let the pastor, don't let the religious believers, don't let a Christian council, don't let a Christian committee because they got some kind of, don't let them convince you to go against my law. No. You follow my law, you follow my rules, you follow my principles. If you are going or attending a place that despise the word of God or subtly inject their own rules, Kevin, run for your life. Kevin, run for your eternal soul. Run, 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 Kevin. They are leading you on a road of destruction. You cannot achieve. Kevin, let me be clear. Whenever you go against my laws to follow the rules of men, you are engaging the laws of tradition. And the laws of traditions are clear, okay? Mark 7 and Matthew 15, it says, because of your tradition, because of this culture that you're committed to, because of this handing down of beliefs that have nothing to do with God, listen to the rules because it got an end result. He says, because of your tradition, the word of God is not producing in your life. It's ineffective. So don't make statements like, oh, Lord, I've been going here for so long and so see that and do this and Lord, ain't nothing happening for me. And nothing will continue not to happen for you because you are following a tradition that Christ has made it clear. Don't wait for judgment of God to remind you of this. I'm telling it to you right now. In the scriptures, he says, listen carefully. If you do anything to achieve the things that I've promised you outside of my law, you are following a tradition that will guarantee you in effectiveness as it relates to the promises of God in your life. Very simple, very clear. I didn't make it up. It's the word of God. I didn't make it up. I did not make it up. I did not make it up. And in fact, I can, I can, I can refer to those two scriptures before I close on. So he says here in verse 3 of Psalms 1, And he shall be like a tree. This is the one who delight in the laws of God. This is the one who meditate upon a day and night. So he's carrying out the instructions that was given to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verses 7, and specifically verse 8. He says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his food in his season. His leaf also shall not with it. It shall never dry up. And listen, listen, and whatsoever he doeth shall do what? Shall do who? Prosper. Why? Because the source of everything that he is doing is based on the word of God, not no hocus pocus scheme, not no sow seed and God can give double for your trouble. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible never says sow money and you will get a miracle. Then the Bible never say give a hundred dollars and you'll get a new man, a new husband. The Bible never said those things and you will get healing. He said, because of his stripes, you are healed. He says that if you meditate upon the word day and night, if you repeat this word and you do what it says to do, then shall you be successful. Then shall you have good success. Then shall you be prosperous. Nowhere am I reading, nowhere am I reading that if I give money to a preacher, that if I give money to a church, that God is going to circumvent the rules that he put in place before the foundation of the world just for me. He can push that aside and say, you know what? I like your money better, Kevin. Give me that couple hundred dollars. While these other fools over here doing my word, I ain't checking for them. I can do it just for you. You will never see it. You will never see it. And whoever's telling you that is a liar. And they have Satan spawned. They are liars. If the Bible, all I've been reading to you is the scriptures. The Bible is clear. I'm reiterating this over and over because many of you have been bamboozled that if you give people money, God is not a sangoma. God is not a rich doctor. In the world of sorcery, you pay and you hire spirits. You are taking that same doctrine, that same belief, and you've allowed it through these charlatans to be brought into the house of God. And you're saying to the people of God, don't read this. Don't read this. What to do? You could cut all of the chase and come pay the spirit, come pay God. Forget what Jesus did. Forget the thorns on his head. Forget the piercing in his side. Forget being nailed to a cross. 
Forget being spat upon, whipped, and embarrassed. Forget all of that. Just pay. God says, I'm willing to overlook all of that if you could bring me a couple of dollars and I'll make it happen for you. It's a lie. It is another gospel. It is not. And this is the same thing I told the people in Texas. Some people got out and walk away. That don't move Kevin because you will never stop me from preaching the authentic word of God. And I am trying to, one day, I pray to, I pray to God that you don't find the truth out on the other side when it's too late. I pray to God that you will go like the Bereans and study the scripture for yourself. God never hired, sorry, never told Paul, Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Ezekiel. He never told none of them before you do a miracle for them, before you do a turnaround in their life. Ensure that they give you a couple of dollars. You will never, ever, ever, ever see it in this life. Never. Never. If you say you want to make a sacrifice and say, I will, I will plant this seed, Pastor, I will put this in your life. But, Pastor, I'm, you see the scripture? I ain't standing on this money, you know. I'm just giving this to you as a sacrifice, but I'm standing on the scripture. Then there's nothing wrong with that. But if you say, it, because you give Kevin $800, $1,000, $50, and because you do that, God is going to push away his word and heal you. You are more fool than fool could be. Your faith, your confidence should be in the word of God. You should meditate upon it day and night. Listen to what it says. Then read the scriptures. It didn't say you will be successful when you don't give the money. It didn't be successful if you give. No, you will be successful based on how you engage, apply the laws, the rules of the living God. Very clear, very simple. All right. So he says here, we can wrap up right here. He says, and he shall be like a tree, Psalms 1 verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaves shall not wither, meaning that all the businesses and all the things that he have his hand in shall not dry up. They will produce. Why? Because his source is the word of God. Shall not wither, and whatsoever he do it shall prosper. You won't connect with somebody like this. Verse 4 of Psalms 1. He says, however... The ungodly, who would be the ungodly? Those who are going against the laws of God. Those who are listening to these charlatans, these thieves, these liars, okay? These money-hungry dogs, that's what they are. They are leading you on a road of unrighteousness if they are going against the laws of God. Hence, they are labeled ungodly. He says very clearly in Psalms 1 verse 4, the ungodly are not so. What do you mean by they are not so? They will not be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that shall bring forth their fruit in their season. Okay? He says that in terms of them not withering up, they will wither up. And whatever they put their hand to will fail. Why? Because of the title ungodly. But they didn't just become ungodly because someone labeled them that. No. Even in failure, even in destruction, there is a protocol. For example, Hosea 4 and 6. My people perish. Why? There's a protocol. Because they lack knowledge. You're not going to perish because you could perish. You, there is a protocol in failure. There is a protocol in success. Everything has a law, a rule, a principle. But if nobody is teaching you this, then you will be quick to grab on that if I give money, then God will make it happen for me. No! The whole purpose of the rules is to condition you for the promise. That's the whole purpose of it. To make sure that it is engrafted in you. That you follow the rules to get here. Now that I got what I've been praying for, I now know how to manage it. I now know how to distribute it wisely. I now know how much to keep, how much to give, how much to invest. I know because as I was following the rules, the laws, the principles of God, it was conditioning me for this moment right here. But these thieves aren't telling you that. What they're telling you, bring me your money. Bring me your seed. Bring me your best food. Bring me your rent. Bring me a child's school fee. God never told nobody in the Bible, take your child's school fee and your mortgage and bring it to us. It's a lie what he said to follow my laws, my rules, my principles, my ordinance, my precepts. What did he say next? Then shall you be successful. Then shall you have be prosperous and have good, not just success, but good success. Because you were patient, you were disciplined in following my laws and you didn't realize it. It was conditioning you. You will never see poverty again. You will never see backwardness again. Why? Because you followed the laws of God and never the laws of these thieves, liars, and charlatans. God will meet you one day 
And I pray to God for every false teacher and prophet and pastor who's using the banner of Jesus Christ to rape and pillage his people. I pray you repent because you are on the road to a Christless hell. You have now become a reprobate mind. You don't care no more because you was getting away with it so long. I'm here to warn you. Many of you are going to drop down and die. It's going to be God's judgment for misleading his people. I don't want that to happen to you. It is my prayer. I pray for you that you will change from your evil, pernicious, and wicked ways and stop misleading the people of God because you know people are hurting and they're looking for answers and solution and they're coming to you. God has ordained you, but you've taken it for greed and manipulation. You slept with them. You, you, you pillage them. You use them. God is going to judge you. And I pray to God. I pray to God you get safe. I pray to God you repent for what you do. Because the road that Satan is holding your hand and guiding you to is an eternal damnation. There is no changing minds there. There's no repenting there. Get it right. So the Bible ends it by saying, he says, the ungodly are not so, but are like a chaff which the wind drives away. What is chaff? Chaff is that saw dust. And you saw a piece of wood in the dust that comes from it. It is called chaff. And it says, he's, he's given another a simile or metaphor. He says, the ungodly, this is how they are. The ungodly are not so. They are not like the guy who's prospering in verse 3. They are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drive it away. Any wind come their way, it carry them all over the place. They have no, no sustainability. They have no standard. Everything is based on their rules or the rules of somebody else, but never the rules of God. Verse 5 of Psalms 1. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the seat of the righteous. Listen, listen, for those who think they're getting away. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. He knows the way. For those of you who are living according to the laws of God, he knows what your end is going to be. He knows what he has already put aside, and you are on that road going there to what he has already created for you. Therefore the ungodly are not, shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. Listen carefully. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. So what is God saying in that last sentence? Those of you who are robbing the people of God through your money-making schemes of getting the people of God to discount the word of God and put their hope and trust and belief in money, you, you are bound for hellfire. You are wicked, you are evil, and you are going against the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul made it clear. Galatians 1 verse 8 and 9, he says, If anyone in my entourage or even an angel come to you with another gospel, Jesus never did it. Why can't we for if seed sowing for miracles every time? In fact, I already completed my study on this. And more than likely within the next two weeks, I'm going to bring this teaching because I'm going to meticulously go through the Bible. I'm going to show you the life of Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Ezekiel, Hosea, Zechariah, all of them, Matthew, Luke, John, Paul, I'm going to show you all of them. I'm going to give you a nice cross section of their ministries and nowhere are you seeing this demonic evil of seed sowing for the promises of the word of God. Nowhere. Where did we get this evil from? Where did we get this wickedness from? This is not of God. This is not of God. God never told none of his leaders, pillage my people, put curses on them if they don't pay tithe. Tell them they'll never prosper if they leave this church. This is another gospel. Why can't I see Jesus who, not Jesus, Judas, in my opinion, who committed the greatest atrocity, who betrayed the Christ, had him murdered. God, Jesus never cursed him. Jesus never told him he will not prosper. Jesus never damned his life to eternity. Never. Jesus treated him no different from the other 11 that were faithful. What was Jesus doing? He was showing us how to handle your enemies. You don't do what they do to you. You don't spite them. You don't go tit for tat with them. You, you, you be the adult and follow the laws of the living God. You follow with the rules. Say, bless those that curse you. Huh? Jesus knew he was stealing from the treasury, but he still had him in charge of it, eh? Why? Because Jesus said, you, 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 you will have to give an account for that, Mr. Mr. Judas. You know the rules. I don't have to beat you and badge you with it. You know the rules. So if you choose to go against the rules, that is your decision. You made that. So when you stand before the one and only God, 
you have no case in terms of defense because you saw it, you were taught it, you were with the Christ, Mr. Judas, but you made the decision. And what does it always boil down to? To money. The Bible says in the book of Timothy that the love of money, the love of it is the root of all evil. I should tell you a lot about these preachers who keep begging you for money, begging you for seed and putting promises that God never did on these so-called sow a seed and you will get these miracles. Never. So the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. It is the source. What caused Judas to do what he did? Money. Money. And that's what the houses of God, not all of them, but most of them, the majority of them, has become a den of thieves. Everyone trying to pillage you and shake you down, giving you, in every scripture you get, have to do with giving them money. It is not, I know they hate me, I know they despise me, but I don't care. As long as God give me breath in these lungs of mine, I will teach, I will educate, I will inform the people the word of God. If you mad, you are mad because of the scriptures, because I didn't write the Bible. I had no co-authoring to do with it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you that the spirit of the living God, the spirit of truth, had visited this session and is still here. I thank you that the spirit of truth has led us into not some, not a piece, not a portion, but into all truth. The spirit of truth has unfolded the scriptures, has broken it down, has used me, Father God, to literally enlighten the people of what your word requires of them. You said, do not let the word or the law of God depart out of our mouth, but meditate upon it when? What is the prescription, Mr. Jesus? Day and night. And in doing, he says, meditate upon it day and night, and now do that it is requiring or asking us to do. As a result of following that protocol, he says, then, meaning that the, the then and only then shall you have shall you become prosperous and the key uh, prefix and good success. Good success meaning it has no problems attached to it, no regrets, none of it. Uh, the scripture says that the blessings of the Lord added wealth and no sorrow. So if this so-called blessing is attached with sorrow, grief, pain, and it is not of God. It is of Satan. It is a, it is a, it is a, it's a fake. It is a fraud. It is a phony. It is, it is nothing to do with God. So God, I pray that you open up the spiritual eyes of myself as well as your people and that you would heighten our sense of discernment. And even in our desperation to see change in our lives, that we will not fall to the, to the theatrics and the tricks of Satan using people to lure us in a situation to make us believe that this is your blessing. I pray, Lord, that you would endow them with the gift of wisdom and knowledge and understanding and the conviction, especially for those who do not know you as Lord, been in church all their lives. And all they ever went there for, because they were trained to do it, is to seek a handout from you, to seek a blessing from never getting their soul right, never seeing the importance of making it right for eternity, never thought about getting their insurance policy so that when, they're, when they inevitably cross over on the other side, that they would have all of the documentation required to enter into your kingdom that you've prepared for those that love you. I pray right now during the session above everything else, Lord, that those that do not know you as Lord and Savior will come to the saving grace, come and accept the free gift of salvation. But Jesus Christ did. He has made it possible for all mankind, Hindu, Buddha, Sangomo, witch, doctor, whomever, to come and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Father, I pray for those who are in this synagogue of devils, those who are in these dens of thieves, that you will open up their eyes, Father God, and cause them to, to wake up and to discontinue wasting their time in these places when they should have been already equipped out there on the battlefield and winning souls through their ministry only to populate the kingdom of God here on the earth by recruiting souls to the kingdom. I pray for a spirit of boldness and courage and might to bring, Father God, those controlling devils that rule their lives into the synagogue of devils that's ruling and dictating and imputing into them rules and policies 
that has absolutely nothing to do with you. I pray right now that the, 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 the boldness of Christ will rise up in them. That same spirit that, that raised the eternal Christ out of that grave will now reside in these people to burst forth boldly, not being under the control of these psychopaths, these controlling Jezebel spirits, narcissists, nutcases. I pray for deliverance for them too. But Lord, release your people. Many of them have been sitting on their gifts for eons. Many of them are now on the last lap of their lives. And God forbid if they were to die today or tomorrow, they cannot show no form of harvest based on the gifts that you have given them. They are going to be like that, that servant with the one talent who buried his talent in the ground saying, Lord, I was afraid because I know you reap where you didn't sow. And God called him not call him not only a wicked servant, but a slothful servant who was now cast into eternal damnation. Why? What? Because he was a thief? No. Because he was a liar? No. Because he was an adulterer? No. Because he didn't use the gifts that God has given him. Because he sat on it. He's in some synagogue of devils, some den of thieves, who either wanted to prostitute his or her gift, or cause them or tell them that they could never be what you have called them to be unless they go through this nutcase psychopath. I pray right now that the eyes of them will be enlightened, that the scales will be removed, that you will give them a new day, Father God, to realize that they must redeem the time and realize at the end of the day, we all got to give an account. We have no obligation to know pastor, no preacher. Yes, we must submit to those that are teaching, preaching, declaring, and proclaiming the unadulterated word of God. No questions asked. We must submit to them. But for those who choose to take a different part, for those who choose to add to the word of God, for those who choose to use the word to manipulate innocent souls, as well as those who know better, only to enrich themselves by giving them promises through seed, sowing that you never said. Father, I pray right now, I pray right now that you release those people. Release them right now. Release them from these Jim Jones camp. Release them from these David Koresh type spirits. Remove them from these places, Lord, that is literally guiding them to an eternal damnation. I pray, Lord, that you would infuse them just like you've done to me with an insatiable hunger, an insatiable desire, an insatiable desire to see men and women's lives change, to see people's lives turn around, not because of what I say, but because of what the word of God says. That if, if you could do it for me, Lord, Lord, you are no respect of person. You are willing and able and eager to do it for them. The only thing you require, like I've been saying from the beginning of this message to the very end, is that they abide by your laws, your rules, your principles. For some reason, this seemed to be the real uh, uh, game changer here. Or, or they, they, they refuse, they, they're so quick to follow the laws of men, but quick to dismiss your written word. Father, I pray right now that the spirit of truth break that, 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 that bewitching spirit off of them. Break that controlling spirit. Father God, your word declares uh, in the book of Hebrews 4 and 12 or 12 and 4, and you says that the, the, the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting asunder the spirit from the soul. So Lord, I'm asking you right now through the word of God to sever via your word that spirit of rebellion, that spirit of control, that spirit of deceitfulness that has been attached to the soul of your people. Lord, let the word of God saw and cut asunder indefinitely that deceiving devil from them, Father God, that has been levied on them. And Lord, release them, catapult them to where you always wanted them to be, Father God. Advance them, remove the scales from their eyes, Lord, so that they will come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ and not under the controlling evil, wicked powers of people who are using the banner of Jesus Christ to enslave the people of God. That was never your intent. And it was never your rules to any one of your servants to incarcerate you. You yourself, Jesus, never did it. After their brief uh, training with you, you said, go ye into the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
That was your word. You never put hurdles in their way. You never tell them they have to do this. Never. Through your law, which I am adamant to, teach them your word. Teach them your word. You cannot, for you never force Judas. You never force Matthew. You never force John. All you did was live by example, teaching them. You said you will do nothing that you did not hear of your father. So whatever you did, whatever you showed them is what God showed you. Father, let myself and let others who have a hunger for you do it that way. That way meaning the way you instituted it from day one. You never amended any gospel in terms of saying that in order to get a miracle, you got to sow a seed. In order to be protected, you need to be under a pastor covering it up. Never! It was never, 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 never in this life is it in any of your three years of ministry instituted. These are all controllers. These are all deceivers. And at the end of the day, the churches never produce. People never advance. There's failure, divorce, you name it. Why? Because the word of God is extremely clear. He said, because of your tradition, the word of God is of no effect here. Father, we curse the spirit of tradition by the blood of Jesus Christ. We sever the legs of every traditional spirit in the name of Jesus. Set these pastors and apostles free of this, dev this devil of control. Release them, Father, because they're blinded, not all. Release those who have embraced the spirit of control. Embrace the spirit of manipulation. Embrace the spirit of greed and, and, and filthy lucre. Father God, I pray that there is an intervention between now and the day of exiting this earth. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you. Father, we praise you. And Father, we glorify you and we ask these things in the matchless and in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. So folks, that's it for me. And this is a good welcoming back home party. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I, I feel this message today, man. And somebody need to hear it. And as usual, I pray that you will uh, go back over this message and listen to it again. Take notes and let the emphasis be what I've been saying all along. Commit to the word of God. Commit. No human could change my view. No human. None. None. I believe the word of God. I teach the word of God. No devil, no pastor, no preacher my mother, my wife, my children, nobody could alter, could change, or to get me to go against the laws of God. It ain't going to happen. If you want to go to hell, go on your own. I ain't coming behind you. If you want to live a defeated life, go on your own. I will enjoy my life. You know why? Because I will be like that guy, okay, who delighted in the laws of, the God, of God, who meditated upon it day and night, and I will be, and I am the recipient of verse 3 of Psalms 1. I am like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. I am bringing forth my fruit on a consistent basis in my season. I don't need no preacher. I don't need no prophet. I don't need no prophetess to tell me my season is coming. Get out of here. I know my season is coming. Why? Because I'm following the rules. I, don't, you, I only need a prophet when I'm following the rules. Once I follow in the rules, it is quite clear. I will have my season. No season will go by with me not engaging it fully. Why? Because I am following the laws of the living God. And that's what I'm telling you to do. So folks, you have a good night. God bless you. And I will see you next time.